evening. It is episode 51 of the Squadcast here in the bunker uh, here at IKS Studios. And just before we go live, uh, I hear this massive like clunk in the back room, and I'm wondering if Rolf, our engineer, might have gotten a concussion. Rolf, are you okay back there? It was no, Kevin Kiermeyer no. sliding home. Ooh, hey, there Just we go. Didn't. We will be talking about Kevin Kiermeyer. Did the, you pick something out back there, Rolf? The Tampa Bay Rays. There's the some Toronto intel that you picked up back there. Uh, if the show looks a little different today, uh, there's a reason. Uh, there is some camera stuff going on before the show, and just don't worry about it. Technology and stuff. Just don't worry about things. it. Uh, it still looks great. Still Ralph th- put the filter on me. I'm looking nice and skinny today. Oh, yeah? Feeling good. And the, see, your camera looks great oh, when you're zoomed camera. in. Oh, well. It's that one now, You Ralph. know, they that say it's the not one. the camera. Yeah. It's what the camera picks up. See, like. here's you know, the it's thing. Like, yes, it's that. It's not the equipment. It's the operator. Yes. So I, in this case, would not be the operator, but I would be the subject of the equipment. So... Yeah, it's not the size know, of the makes sense. dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog, you might say. How huh? much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Exactly. I mean, they couldn't have said it better myself, honestly. Um, We are on the air, I guess. Uh, (laughs) Well, thanks for checking in tonight. I'm seeing Katie Fleury's checking in. Uh, (laughs) Katie Fleury's telling the guys in the back, stop wrecking the place back there. Thanks, Katie. I'm telling you, like, we're going to lose our studio deal. Honestly. Um, Adam Schultz. Good thing to have. Yeah. Adam Schultz is waving. Robin Wildey's checking in. Uh, my nephew's calling me, hello, drunk uncle, hashtag seven deep. For some reason, he makes fun of me uh, for having a couple of drinks going to a rider game. And like, then he <laughs> texts me halfway through the game and he's like, hey, uncle, can you, uh, can you buy me a beer? And I'm like, no, screw you. You were making fun of me. I'm not buying you nothing. <laughs> Shouldn't that have been an example for your young nephews saying, no, you don't want to look like Uncle Clark. It just exactly. doesn't work that Jackson, way. Jackson, you don't want this. You don't, don't want to be eating your burgers <laughs> with no condiments at halftime, Jackson. Oh, you don't want to be. Hey, you don't, you're not that be, guy, pal. You'll you're be extremely proud of me. I yeah. put a little ketchup and mustard on my burger. You put ketchup. Yeah, I know, right? Where's now, horns for Clark? Beep, 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 Where's the Rod Peterson? How about that? Uh, yeah, um, but <laughs> you, you know that scene in uh, Walk Hard where he's like, you don't want no part of this, man. <laughs> That's what I should have done. I, uh, I laugh very it's hard one of my that favorite because scenes. That, was, that was a reference used uh, quite a few times at a golf tournament that oh, I was yeah. just at. Literally, <laughs> I think that might be one of my top five favorite movie scenes of all time. The, you don't it's want fantastic. any part of this, man. It's very, very It's good. not habit forming. <laughs> Oh, that sounds the pretty good. Is for me, <laughs> no, yeah. Thanks for checking in. Uh, Sheridan, <laughs> da- Sheridan Davis is saying hello. Hello. Myron's checking in. Thanks, Myron. Uh, Blair Stepp is checking in. Good evening, Blair. Uh, and Jamie Preston's checking in. Blue Jays have a 2-1 lead. It's now 2-2. Okay. Uh, that's up to the minute, by the way. Donna Berger's checking in, liking and sharing. Thank you, Donna. If you guys don't mind hitting that share button, hit that like button. And let's send in some comments throughout the evening. Alan Lee is checking in. Alan, Alan Lee says, how about that? Clark puts condiments on his burger. Look at that, <laughs> hey? Now, this is a one-time. It happened one time, okay, guys? Like, <laughs> yeah, give me a break. It was, it was a time. <sighs> Me, give me a break, Max. Uh, anyways, we are having fun here. We're having fun. Uh, we are presented by our friends at Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions. Rockstar is the best place to go if you need help to find out how to get supplies, how to make, how to streamline your business uh, orders, how to streamline all sorts of stuff, and they can handle it all for you. They're great people. They hang out with us every night. They hey, gave us flamingos. I mean, what more could you ask for? Um, they are great people. Give them a call, rockstar.com, or give them a call. You can check out all their uh, contact information on their website uh, and give them a follow on, on Twitter, on Facebook, all the places. They have some great channels and they have a lot going on too. Oh, um, yeah. Great social media follow, great people. Uh, so we're going to move into the top of the order here, Max. Um, a I'm few just things a, to discuss. As I continue to just kind of tinker away with setting up the show here, mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to let you take over. The first uh, item on the list is Kirill Capri. Actually, sorry. Nope. First order of the business. <laughs> Ask us anything. Send yeah. us comments. Send us chirps. Send us a whole bunch it. of stuff throughout the night. There's Hulk. Um, there so we're going to have to give Hulk a new shirt. We are going to have. Well, yeah, we, we are. Did I just uh, give too much away? No, no, no. It's, it's, as, as you said earlier, the, the teaser from the Minnesota Wild. Yeah. That, that was, I mean, it's not like it's the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer <laughs> where they're not. <laughs> Clark goes, yeah, they're teasing the Wild. Deal. Give me, give me. What, what, what's the term? What's the dollar value? I don't, I don't know. Tell me the freaking info. It took info. six minutes, man. Just um, chill. So, yeah, Kirill Kaprizov, we can go to that now, guys. Um, He signs a deal today with the Minnesota Wild, and it was kind of the one a lot of people were waiting for. There he is. Uh, 24-year-old super rookie out of Russia, comes Mm -hmm. over, wins the Calder Trophy for Rookie of the Year, had nearly a point per game but not quite, but, like, was literally the only positive dynamic thing that the Wild had going for him. The rest of their team is 
pretty ho-hum it's offensively so let's say defensively they're a good structured team they had good goaltending last year everything worked out they had a good season but without Kaprizov we said it I said it specifically I don't know if they're a playoff team without this guy um, he's played 55 NHL games and you know people are I've already gotten messages like how did he get nine million dollars already mm-hmm. he's only played 55 games and they're giving him nine million dollars I get it and I want to hear what you think, Max. Yeah, 100. And we were just talking about it a little bit off air before the show. It's one of those ones where I get it, I don't agree with it. But I'm not Bill Guerin. I'm not running the Minnesota Wild. So at the end of the day, when you look at it, 55 games played, the production that he put up certainly indicates that he's trending towards being that $9 million a year player. Having that said, though, he was one of those rare RFAs that had a little bit of leverage, right? He was one of those guys that he had an opt-out clause to go home and go to Russia. And like you said, the Minnesota Wild clearly understand what he's worth to their organization. At $9 million bucks. I mean, that's a... a in an $82 million cap, that is a small pre- one five. sorry, if we're getting real technical for the people that are going to get me <laughs> in the comment section. But, uh, no, it, it just it made sense. As far as an investment is concerned, you lock him up for five years, you get the Austin Matthews term, as it were, anyways, for a five-year deal. $45 million bucks in the state of hockey at the end of the day, that's that's something you can stomach that he could potentially return on his own in jersey sales over the next five well, years. Seriously. So we'll see what happens. Again, in but, Minnesota... Yeah. There isn't another Jersey sales nope. guy. Like maybe there they're Captain Jared Spurgeon. Was it Rich or... Sutter that said they're a bunch of guys, a bunch right? Of they're guys. a bunch of guys and Kirill. Kirill the Thrill. Again, so. a lot of guys, and we say this as, uh, you know, that sounds like we're being mean. A lot of these guys, I would love to have on my team Kevin as a Fiala's third. Kevin turning into a player yep. in Nashville. As a third yeah. liner or like a shutdown defenseman. A lot of guys I'd love to have. Yep. They just It's a weird group of guys. That's all we're saying. It's a, it's a group with chemistry, right? And, yeah. that, and at the end of the day, when you look at the Central Division where they're going to be back playing this year, again, they're one of those fringe teams, right? You're not necessarily sure if they're going to be that team that makes its way into a playoff conversation, but this greatly helps their chances when you lock up the burden, or I guess, budding franchise superstar yeah, oh, in Kirill Kaprizov. Speaking so. of budding franchise superstars, the Columbus Blue Jackets locked up Elvis Merzlikens out of Latvia. Say that name 20 times. I bet you could say it five times. That I don't just know seems like an times. inefficient use of time. Uh, yeah, don't do that. Uh, <laughs> they signed him to a five-year deal. I think, what, it's $27 million? $27 million. Next, so five and a bit. More than UC Soros. Um, yeah, more See? than UC Soros. Uh, now, Merzlikens has kind of taken over the starting role in, Ke- uh, in Columbus after it was Eunice Corposalos. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll remember, uh, Leaf suffering Leaf fans will remember that Merzlikens was the one that came in and relieved Corposalo early in that Columbus series, and then Corposalo came back and kind of took over again and absolutely shut the door that year. Um, tick tick one on to the list of suffering things that Leaf fans constantly think about. <laughs> Clark, the season hasn't even begun yet. Hey. Come on. Hey, I'm Give just yourself saying. at least a minute before you get You're on right. the suffering point. train. Uh, but anyways, Merz Lickens, <laughs> he has come out, and this was the statement I wanted to say. Uh, he has come out and said, I'm going to go win the effing Vezina Trophy. He I said like it. That. And uh, obviously with, his, Jordan, with what happened. Jordan, that out? Yeah. Jordan, bleep out the thing I didn't say. Um, <laughs> with what happened with his, his mm-hmm. country mate uh, this offseason, mm-hmm. Matisse Kavliniex, who passed away, mm-hmm. that fireworks crazy incident. Um he's he's on a mission and i've i'm this is the one thing about columbus that you know we all say they're probably going to be last in the metro division ah uh, would yeah. wouldn't it be a story though it man would. he he has puts up amazing Sweet. season wins the vesna mm-hmm. and somehow they sneak in i don't i mean it's a long shot but it's fun to think about. It's one to I, it would be for. a great storyline. Oh, 100%. It's one that you root for all day long, twice on Sunday, right? It's just it, when you look at the, the off season and you look at just Columbus as a whole, right, It's you need to have it, – it's a galvanizing factor, right? Yeah. You never want to talk about that in terms of hockey because it's not nearly as important as the loss of life that occurred um, for Kivleniak, obviously. But at the end of the day um, – I love Merz Lickens. I love his attitude. I love the fire. However, he's going to use this as motivation, as a way to honor his memory, whatever it may be. Uh, you just love to see those quotes. You love to see the organization step up with a nice contract for him. It's uh, it's one of those things where, as you alluded to, Clark, it'd be a great story to follow all season long. And we've seen this guy at his best. It's going to be a long season. It's going to be a lot of hockey for him to be able to achieve uh, a lofty goal. But at the end of the day, like you said, it's a storyline to root for, no doubt. Uh, speaking of the suffering Maple Leafs, I'm just seeing a video now that they are teaming up with Justin Bieber's merchandise brand, oh. Drew. Uh, of course they now, are, I hey? don't know if that's going to be the the logo on their jersey this year, but oh, they're, wow. they're, they're all getting uh, 
they have Drew Leafs jerseys. They have Drew Leafs towels. They have Drew like oh, all, all of their team gear is Drew. The now. marketing department is doing some wonders there. So, I like that. I wouldn't. I would love to see the Drew brand on the jersey. Like, You're going to be become a, good, a believer again, aren't you? Um, yeah, I'm buying. I, in. I I'm think buying you are. In. I might have to buy some Drew stuff. You might now. have to buy. Some. Look at that. Hey, I wasn't going to influence your marketing. I wasn't going to hey, look at that. I know Justin Bieber's a big Leaf fan, so it doesn't Page surprise one me. one out of the Polytech. This doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> uh, but anyways, just a little quick one. I'm just scrolling through tick, uh, through the ticker as I go. Through the ticker. Uh, Ryan Friesen's checking in on YouTube. He's always positive on the Rod Peterson show. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the Rod Peterson show page. Ryan Friesen says, Blue Jays suck. Hey, Ryan. Awesome. Uh, Nick P says, go Blue Jays. They don't suck. Nick, I like Nick. Yeah, I like um, that too. Yeah. yeah, that guy. Good job, Nick. Him. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Um, oh, my, uh, our, my our split dad is saying, loving the hat, Max. Um, also, Robin Wildey's checking in. Ha, 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 ha. That's what the Leafs need, Justin Bieber. Anyway, I mean, they haven't had him really on board on, in terms of, like, really connecting yet. And we'll see. It's 3-2 Jays, by the way. Uh, Vlad chugs for a double. Semyon to third, zero out. So I think Semyon must have scored. Good there we go. Um, we have our good friends who are coming on next segment, Leroy and Leroy checking in. Um, just so you gentlemen know, I don't know if you partake, but there is a beverage in the fridge over there with your names on it. Uh, it doesn't actually have your names on it. I didn't write your names, but uh, if you would like one, there are some. Um, great Western products, of course. Great Saskatchewan company. Uh, we'll talk to Leroy and Leroy coming up in just a few minutes. Uh, as we continue on, oh, and my script gets logged out, Max. But Jim Houston retired. I knew Good that. that I knew that was the next one. Yeah. Uh, Forty-two year career for this guy. Unbelievable. I had no idea that was the number for this guy. Forty-two years, Jim Houston. Uh, I personally would say he's my favorite play-by-play -play announcer in my lifetime. Of all time. Uh, I don't know about all time, but okay. I'm going to say of my lifetime that you know of the national guys that I would say mm -hmm. he's the guy for me. I know everyone's going to say Bob Cole. Bob Cole's the legend, the goat. In my lifetime of my like memories watching hockey, I know Bob Cole uh, called a few Leafs playoff series mm -hmm. in my early days, but for the most part, it's been Jim Houston. Mm -hmm. Love this guy, uh, Max. I don't know what do you want. Do you, you know who to I greatly miss, and again, I, I don't even want this to be considered pandering because I, when <laughs> I think back of broadcasts uh, back in my day, I would always tune in and watch because I was a big fan of the Mighty Ducks growing up. Oh, yeah. And during that tenure and during that time, good friend of the show the upstairs show as well as our show Peter Labardius always was a voice that stood out for me during those broadcasts yeah. of Flames Sportsnet games and, stuff and, back in the day. And, and exactly it was just always one of those ones and the Oilers games as well too he called he the was, famous goal we asked him about it on the show the exactly. famous uh, Patrick Steffen missed the net he called that goal that was that one right yes he yes that, that was that one that, yeah. exactly but I just I don't know his voice always stood out to me like whenever Paul Correa was playing on the road in Alberta those were always the games that my parents would let me stay yeah, up and awesome. watch because back in the day when you didn't have have the access that we do now tough to get out of market games uh, for the anaheim mighty ducks oh so it was, I, bet. Uh, I guess listening to peter labardius back in the day that's it's just always fond memories for me as a broadcast voice but yeah. no jim houston's career i mean at the end of the day geez 42 seasons like you said he's almost been around long enough yeah. to see the last time the Leafs won a stanley cup but oh, at jeepers. the end of the day when it comes to jim houston I, I remember MVP, most valuable yeah, primate. He was, in that? he was the voice. Oh, remember wow. in the in the penultimate game in yeah. uh, where, whatever it was of, called. Good the good time, use of BC vocabulary, place. Max. Uh, penultimate. Uh, I know. Just I've pulling that out of nowhere. Got a good one. Um, but the obviously the NHL games back in the day. Yeah. Uh, but games. the one the one thing I found was really cool is he was known for great save Luongo. Great save and for whatever Luongo. it was always yeah. for whatever reason it was always Luongo. He was really good, obviously. But, oh yeah. Um, the, somebody went back and pulled his very first ever great save Luongo. Yeah. And it was awesome. It was so cool. It's 2006. It was. it was a blast from the past. A, uh, a the very New York deserved, Rangers. much heralded broadcaster yeah, in Canadian culture. He, he'll be a legend for a long, 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 long time. Enjoy uh, retirement, Jim, in case you This is a in. quick one, but we wanted to make sure we mentioned it because I think this guy deserves a lot of kudos, a lot of props. A lot of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, Jonathan Drouin, he tells his story recently of why a lot of people were asking, why is this guy not playing? What's going on? Last mm -hmm. year, midway through the year, just up and said, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, he decided to take some time off. He needed some time off. And we weren't sure. You know, we were obviously our minds always go to the worst. We were yep. thinking maybe it was substance abuse. Maybe it was something else. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But isn't that sad, though, in 2021? I shouldn't say that. that I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't no. downplay this, but. We're, we texted each other immediately mm -hmm. and we're like, I'm glad that was it. And I'm glad he was able to tell us that right. that was and it. And I want to continue my point on that because Sorry. wouldn't that yeah. suck if I 
end it at that. I just mean, isn't it sad in 2021 that that's what our minds jump to, right? Oh. I feel like we've been conditioned yeah. to that. But, like, again, very much like you said in Echo Chamber, my friend, just glad that it's something that he was able to deal with, yeah. something where he's able to get back on the ice. At 26 years old, this is still yeah. a very young man. Um, I really wish Third good, overall pick I, back in the really day. really wish good things for him, right? And Montreal is going to need him this year just in Huge. terms of the hockey elements. So I'm really hoping that he, he took the time off and, and yeah. got himself feeling well again, and that's the most important thing. And he seems recharged. Absolutely. So with that being said, said um you know if you're going through something like this uh or maybe you're an athlete mm -hmm. and you're you're having this anxiety and insomnia that he said he said he couldn't go to sleep some nights yeah. just straight up couldn't sleep because of anxiety um so of course yeah take time like step back uh realize mm -hmm. what's important in life and I, i'm just for him i'm just so happy that he felt mm -hmm. that he was able to do that and that's a big step because hockey is one of those sports where if you're not the toughest and roughest nobody you know you, you lose respect sometimes i'm just i'm uh, this is a big step for hockey i like it. oh 100 percent. yeah and then i'm glad it, it worked out oh. the way it did and i hope he has a huge year honestly even though i'm a leafs fan i hope this guy has a huge year absolutely and comes right back to what everyone thought only, he was gonna only be only a person to root for right yeah, yeah. um we got a roll here because uh we got to get to the leroy's here coming up in a minute let's get into the nfl talk how about that we'll save the blue jay stuff because sure. we're gonna We'll, we're we'll, talk we'll dive into the Jays for sure. Um, Kevin Kiermeyer, Kiermeyer steals a uh, scouting report. We don't have to go to that I yet, I thought you were going to say stole a base. Um, That'd be something, No, actually, but Kevin know. Kiermeyer steals a scouting report, and Max is f just through the roof hot right now. Uh, but we'll get to the NFL now. Uh, the top performers this past week, Kyler Murray led the Cardinals with 400 I typed years in the script. 400 years. Wow. 400 years for not, Kyler Murray. Not quite. Uh, 400 yards, passing yards to be specific. Uh, Kyler Murray leads the Cardinals as they squeak one out against the Vikings. Thir what was it? 34-33? 34-33, yeah. Uh, so they squeaked that one out. Uh, Kyler Murray, again, he's making his statement for MVP. And I know before the season... Well, you're saying Matt Stafford because you're freaking biased. Well, as no, I just, yeah, I'm not biased. I'm just saying if you watch. Well, look this, at you. You're not if biased. If you watch this game, he also threw two picks. Oh. The Cardinals got super lucky on a. Th he got a 34 yard game where it bounced off two guys' asses and ended up in their tight end's hands. And he run for 34 That's yards. That's just and then skill, the Vikings my kicker misses a chip shot. You know how hard it is to bounce a pass off two guys' asses and then get the yeah, guy to catch he, it. Because Kyler totally meant to do that. Anyways, Tanner, I'm glad that your boys won in my squad select, but for the NFC West standings. Cardinals should be one and one. Absolutely, should be one and one. Just um, saying. Our buddy Jeremy Corrigan's <laughs> checking in. Great save, Luongo. Uh, he he has a good uh, good impression. When we get Jeremy on next, we're gonna Absolutely. have to get him to do his Jim Houston impression. Um, Colin McAnulty's just saying Bob Cole. I'm getting off track though. Um, <laughs> Lamar Jackson, this just, when I saw this, I know he does this all the time, mm -hmm. and I shouldn't be surprised by this anymore, but it still surprises me every time. It's 107 rushing yards as they beat the Kansas City Chiefs 36-35 in an absolute nail-biter. Now, this was our battle game in squad select last week. Uh, I, I was given the Ravens, so I'm super happy that this happened. Yeah, uh, the Ravens ended yeah. up winning in that big, what was it, Sunday night football? Sunday night football. Um, so that's a big one. Stay tuned the later Carrie in the Underwood show. The game of the week. Oh, yeah. Carrie Underwood. She's good. She's good. Um, stay tuned later in the show. We're going to do our next week's squad select picks. Uh, and we already have a huge battle game for that one, too. So it should be good. Uh, Derek Henry is back. 182 rushing yards for the monster. Yeah. Uh, he, they, he led the Titans, uh, Darren DuPont's Titans, to be specific. 33-30 uh, win over the Seahawks. Uh, so that NFC West is uh, up and down right now. But it's going to be a good division overall. And uh, I don't know, Max, do we want to, what else stood out to you this past week? Well, I, just, I'm just I know the Rams. Der Derek Henry. I, I think I might be buying Derek Henry's Jersey after oh. uh, the save that he gave me in fantasy football. Oh, this week yes. Against, uh, I guess, often brought up Tanner ring. Oh, uh, Tanner. Uh, yeah. Just uh, found a way to squeak that one out. I totally knew Derek Henry was going to pull through in the second half. You, run for you didn't doubt yards, it whatsoever. Three touchdowns. Of course you did. Uh, I was not negative whatsoever about him in the first half, actually. And oh, he only yeah. had six points going into oh, it. I bet. But either way, Tractor Cito, as he's known on another popular <laughs> podcast, uh, he went off. And I'm very, very happy about that for my fantasy football. Right uh, now. Quick Toronto Blue Jays update. Bottom of the sixth inning. Blue Jays up 3-2. Um, Alec Manoa is still in the game. Uh, he's pitching against Manuel Margo as we speak. Margo just popped up for the first out of the inning. So there you go. Uh, the CFL power rankings, let's toss those up. Talk a little CFL for you. Uh, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers continue to kind of run the show in the league as they continue to be in the first spot in the power rankings. The BC Lions have shot up there. Uh, they've had a few really good weeks in a row. So they're above the Rough Riders now, and they are playing the Rough Riders this week. So that should lead to some interesting storylines. The Rough Riders, uh, after a couple rough weeks against the Boo Bombers, they were able to bounce back with a win last week against the Argonauts. Great game, by the way. Was there? You were there? Or did you end up not going? Did not. You go. were gonna go. 
Did he not didn't go. go. Yeah. Interesting drama. Uh, <laughs> Hamilton Tiger Cats, uh, they're kind of coming back to form after a rough start. So they've jumped up the standings a little bit. The Argos and the Alouettes, after a loss this past week, they're down. And this is the most surprising part. We see Calgary and Edmonton 7 and 8, uh, respectively. Those two teams before the year, it's Calgary and Edmonton. They've been good for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now, fun fact, the Alberta teams have never missed the playoffs in the same season ever. In the history of the CFL. First time for everything. So maybe it's the first time for everything, absolutely. And then the Ottawa Red Blacks, they just cannot get out of that ninth spot. Man, they have been down there for a few weeks now. Uh, but anyways, a lot of interesting storylines coming out of the CFL. So uh, stay tuned for as that continues. Uh, one note I just wanted to mention, uh, and then we're going to roll here right away. Um, you have a note too, it looks like. Yeah, last minute ad. Okay. Not exactly uh, breaking I'll news. I'll just do a quick one here. <laughs> um, if you follow me on the talk, the TikTok, as the kids, uh, they don't call it that. Uh, they don't call it talk. They I don't, don't call it the talk. I don't know. It's just us old heads doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, I was, uh, if you follow me on TikTok at producer Clark, by the way, uh, hit me Shameless up. Shameless plug. Yep. Uh, no, yeah. No shame whatsoever. Um, I'm I was about working. You, not, the, not the TikTok. Both. Sorry. <laughs> um, I was working the Regina Pats game, the preseason game the other night. Uh, back in the old perch, as I called it, uh, mm. calling some game day stuff, uh, helping out the new staff that are all there. And uh, Connor Bedard uh, played against the, it was Prince Albert, I shouldn't say Connor Bedard plays, but uh, <laughs> hey, look it at was this. Connor Bedard versus the yes. Prince Albert I mean, Raiders. Honestly, yeah. He's in action. Uh, Prince Albert Raiders were in town. Connor Bedard and the rest of the Regina Pats, who they have more players than him, by the way. I'm getting to this. <laughs> uh, but Connor put on a show. They won six to two the other night. I think they played the next, or they're playing Moose Jaw this weekend, Ooh. speaking of Leroy. Uh, Leroy's coming in a sec. He's donning the jersey. So mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about this a little bit. Uh, but uh, they they showed up real well. Connor Bedard is is putting you know he's proving why the hype is there. Uh, but not only that, this is the other one. Cole Carrier with the Regina Pats had a hat trick, shorthanded, three shorthanded that's, goals. That's not a common occurrence. All nope. breakaways. Uh, put up a sh like a good performance. That kid. Mm -hmm. uh, he should be a good player for the team the whole year. Uh, and some other players looked really good as well. But I just thought I'd throw that in there because uh, it was fun to be back at a rink with. Even though it was like, I don't know, 800, 900,000 people. 900,000, eh? Eight, yes. There was 900,000 people <laughs> oh, at the Pats wow. game the other night. That is, uh, they've uh, done an expansion at the Brand Center. Was, that I guess they haven't. It was a franchise record, <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, Max, you want a quick one here? Tatis Machado. Oh, the blowout, the yeah, fight, yes. I don't, I don't know how we missed you, that. You in have the, one uh, minute. Pre-game prep, but yeah, that was a very, very interesting. Oh, look at this. Look at Rolf. Okay, Rolf oh, oh, man. man. Look at Alan, that. Rolf's giving you a run yeah, for your this money, is, Alan. Uh, this, this is impressive. <laughs> this was unprompted. So do I still have a minute? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, one no, minute. No, but the, the, uh, the seconds. picture tells the story right here. At the end of the day, the San Diego Padres have really not lived up to their preseason hype. It's been a very up-and-down season as much as we follow the Toronto Blue Jays and their up-and-down season. It's really yeah. been tough in San Diego given the fact that they are paying Manny Machado $300 million. T Tatis Jr. just signed a $300-plus million contract. This is a team that is supposed to be living up to better expectations as it were in the NL West even though it's a very tough division with the San Francisco Giants and LA Dodgers but yeah they just had a bit of a blowout the other night and I, I got a little bit more context on the video as to what it was about at the end of the day this was just kind of a, a very interesting moment if you're a fan uh, peeling back the iron curtain as it were yeah. these these conversations are typically reserved for the clubhouse but we got to see Manny Machado go yeah they were going out, at it no care and yeah. if you watch the full video in the context of it he's just trying to calm Tatis down and just say you know what all right it was a bad call it was a tough one you're the best player out here everybody knows it don't be worrying about a strikeout we need you to tighten it up good for, for Machado too here. because Machado was Tatis at one point Ex in his career right Great he was point. on a no Great I shouldn't point. say that the Padres are bad no no. But, you know, Machado was on the Orioles mm -hmm. for a lot of years, and he had Andrew Jones, I think, at the beginning of his career maybe in, in Baltimore. Uh, sorry, not Andrew not Jones. Andrew. Adam Jones. Adam Jones, yeah. In the wrong Top, Jones. It's very easy to get those two confused. Both center though, fielders, yeah. both really good. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, Machado had Jones, uh, but then he was kind of on his own in, in Baltimore for a couple of years. And not and Tatis is, you know, he's like the face of the league right mm -hmm. now, so to speak. He's the he's on the video he's game, the video et cetera, game. et cetera. Yep. And Machado now is in what? He's thirty two now, probably thirty one. He's, he's getting older. He's he, been in the he league for twelve league years or something yep. like that, probably You're at this at point. Ten yep. years. Uh so he's probably that vet who's just like, Listen, dude, like, you know, 
it's calm, calm down. <laughs> and, that's, and that's exactly what he said in his post game yeah. comments. And I just got a notification that they were doing some hashing it out in front of the media, just saying like, it's all good. We're just trying to level ourselves off as a team here. But Machado did say that. He said, I was that guy in Baltimore. I was the young kid that just kind of had to sit back and watch. Now okay. it's my turn to take my teachings, be a little bit old school, tell it how it is. And when you're in a grind of 162 game season, when you're battling for your playoff lives, these things are going to happen. We all remember the Bryce Harper, Jonathan Papelbon incident right. way back in the day in Washington. These blow-ups happen, and it, again, it's it's few and far between, especially when it comes to cameras and seeing all these things that go on. Guys picking up uh, scouting reports at home plate, all that <laughs> good stuff. A little heated about that, but regardless, either way, I just thought it was a very, very interesting yeah, awesome. thing that we yeah. don't necessarily see in baseball all the time, and if you watch the whole video, you get the context. It is a very old-school coaching moment from teammate to teammate that was yeah. just kind of an interesting storyline, and he, who knows? Maybe it turns the Padres season around. They squeak in. Could be a turning point. We'll see. A couple of comments before we head to a break. Uh, John Ohm says, BS umpiring last night in the Jays game. We're talking about it later. Yep. Stay tuned. Um, Jeremy Corrigan says, Max, biased? No. <laughs> uh, so I agree with that. Jeremy, you know me too well, even though uh, I've only ever asked you three questions my whole life. <laughs> Clark. Yeah, sorry about that. We'll, we'll get him on. You, you had him on another time. I was going to say, do you? I get a one-on-one -on -one interview with Jeremy? Sure. He seems like a great guy. Would love great. To chat awesome. Uh, my dad <laughs> says, Leroy for mayor. Uh, so we're going to have to Ooh. bring him in and talk about this next. Uh, the Top of the Order is brought to you by our friends at IKS Media, of course. Uh, that's the next segment, actually. But I'm going to do it anyways. The Top of the Order is brought to you by our, our friends over at IKS do Media. Do I need to go Manny Machado on you? It's well, not I mean, about you, man. I, can't, I just can't Figure stop talking the about... Figure Do it can't, right. I can't stop talking about the great folks at IKS Media. <laughs> Love these guys. Uh, anyways, if you want the hottest ticket in town, head to IKS Media. They can set up uh, live events, video screens, all sorts of great stuff. Uh, so if you want to make sure that uh, every seat is the best seat in the house, hit up IKS because they can handle it for you. Uh, when we hit, come back from our two-minute break, we are going to have the man, the myth... The Leroy, Leroy in front of the camera. And Leroy behind the camera is buzzing around here somewhere too. Uh, but we'll have I'm going to try and on. pick up a few tips and tricks from can, if you can Leroy if you can the like nail him down for like three minutes to talk to him. Well, uh, you got you got Leroy in front of the camera for about. Well, I'm going to chat. So Me and Leroy fun. in front are going to have a good chat. Good stuff. Anyways, we'll see you in two minutes. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Everyday hoop life. <laughs> Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. IKS Live, the proud producer of The Rod Peterson Show and The Re Recovery Hour. Visit us at IKSLive.ca. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com.
All right, we are back. Now, I always say this when a guest comes on, that uh, our show is now better looking that Max is now not on the show. And it's, it remains true. Leroy from Moose Jaw joins us. Leroy, uh, we've been trying to get you on for quite a while now. And yeah. not just you, but also Leroy behind the camera. And maybe we'll see, see Leroy behind the camera at some point tonight. But... Thanks for coming down. I know it's a big trip. but I'm glad uh, we could make it in. Obviously, we wanted to come, was it two, three weeks ago? Yeah. No, it was the end of August. Uh, and yeah. uh, Armageddon came. Jesus. We, uh, we did make it into Regina that night, and we had a choice to come on your show or go film with the Riders Cheerleaders. You I lost know. out. I'm a little jealous. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but we had to pull over five times yeah. on the side of the highway that night. It was crazy. Yeah, I, I that's only ever happened to me once. I think we were driving to Edmonton or something one time when I was like three, and we were in an old uh, Chevy Impala, and I I think I might have been in like the back, like the back window, like you know, back in the day oh, when you didn't have seatbelts. Oh yeah. So I, I remember it was like just crazy. You couldn't see, and that was the same. You sent me pictures. We actually put your pictures up on my phone on the show <laughs> to show That's everybody fantastic. that like they're not just skipping out on us. They legitimately can't see. Uh, so you had a good reason, but. Um, you know, the last time you were in this building, you were on the Rod Peterson show. That was a good, good that year was, ago uh, now. Did you find the place okay? Yeah, I know. Uh, so what happened was we came on the show, and three months later, a global pandemic took over. <laughs> yeah. So we apologize for that. Jeepers. It was somehow connected, I'm sure. I was going to say, did, did you have trouble finding the place? Because last time you just kind of walked around a field, and then you bumped into um, it. Siri tells me where to go oh, and how okay. to get there, so, yeah. you know. <laughs> Not bad. It remembered the last time you were here, and it just Rely brought you her. back. Uh, for those who are watching right now and are like, who the, who the heck's this Leroy guy? Uh, <laughs> can you give me, can give us a little synopsis of... Who Leroy and Leroy are? Oh uh, boy! Maybe a little bit of the backstory because I so, know it. It didn't start with just Leroy and Leroy. It was Leroy, Leroy, and Leroy yeah. for a little bit there. Yeah, it was. So twenty. It was twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen. Oh wow! Leroy yeah. behind the cameras over there. He's twenty seventeen. We uh, we had been talking for a good solid year about wanting to start to make some kind of goofy videos, and we were working a hockey game together one night, and uh, we had sparked the conversation again, and someone said, uh, "There's nothing to do," and we or I responded with there's always something to do yeah and I think Leroy behind the camera was like that's it that's our videos isn't it so, great when it just comes together like that like yeah literally great. a week later we showed up uh in uh Wacomal in Moose Jaw for people who are from there beautiful park uh we showed up there uh Leroy behind the camera had his camera uh our other buddy Leroy and I were there and we had no idea what we were going to do and this is what was born from it and it's just so great <laughs> that all your guys names are Leroy it just worked out so perfectly for it's the incredible. theme of the show it's weird, weird. <laughs> it's so great uh you guys have been all over the place now and it started obviously the small town vibe was kind of the thing for a bit you've been all over the province but you've now kind of breached the province borders and you've gone past them so what are some of the places you've been to that kind of stand out in your mind Oh, my goodness. Uh, I feel like every place we go, I really enjoy. We were most recently in Winnipeg. and uh, Boo. Uh, <laughs> we have a lot of people who are from Winnipeg who watch. Sorry, John. Ohm. Sorry. <laughs> the, fun, the fun part of uh, when we got back from Winnipeg, we posted our first video from there. And we got a welcome to town from the uh, Winnipeg Jets, which I thought was pretty awesome. Ooh. Uh, Milk it that didn't reach out to us while we were in town, which is okay because we probably weren't going to leave our hotel room after 8 p.m. in Winnipeg. But uh, we had to. Hey, had he fun did, there. I didn't say it, he said it. <laughs> <laughs> People of Winnipeg were they telling us that when they we know. were there. Yeah. <laughs> so we, uh, no, Calgary was awesome, Edmonton, and then all the small towns in between. Oh. I, I, we have fun wherever we go, and I love when people stop and, and talk to us and stuff. It's great. Now, Leroy behind the camera is behind the camera over there, of course. I, yeah, come on in, uh, Leroy behind the camera. Come now, on over. this is this might be groundbreaking for some people because Leroy behind the camera doesn't always come in front of the camera, but he's got his camera. Oh, he's knocking over our flamingos, uh, which is on brand, honestly. Uh, I'm not surprised, uh, Leroy behind the camera. But um, you have an integral part in this all too, Leroy behind the camera, because obviously a lot of the creative side of things comes from you. Uh, so if you can grab, yeah, go ahead, grab the mic if you don't mind. Um, talk about this journey for you, if you don't mind, and just kind of how, like, life, not life, well, life-changing it's been over the last couple of years. To a certain point, yeah. It is it is really a collaboration. Like, so I always say that I can kind of see things with my, like, visually see stuff before it happens, but Leroy does that with words, so it's crazy. We <laughs> throw out an idea, and then he's just like, he literally just sits there for about 
20 seconds and then all of a sudden it's like whoa yeah yeah well he really literally cool. came up with there's always something to do which is on the shirt here i don't know if we can show the wide shot or not there it is we got the shirt <laughs> um thank you for sending me the we shirt sent you the one yeah <laughs> did you get jordan his shirt by the way because he still has his iou <laughs> if, and i don't know well, once he cashes it in I, we need to see that iou <laughs> jordan get that iou out he probably has it framed <laughs> somewhere at this point um, so you guys, again, you started back, you had an infamous third Leroy. Now, a lot of people ask about the infamous third Leroy and, uh, I just, I, is he just on a really long vacation or? Yeah. Well, <laughs> just on a big trip. He's he moved trip. away and, right. uh, it was really difficult for him to bridge the gap between Regina and Moose Jaw. <laughs> uh, his I, wife, as you can tell, it took us months to get you guys here, so I can understand it. <laughs> <laughs> well, when this when this really took off, and uh, it was really January that this all took off for us. This is when we changed how we did it. We joined the talk, as Clark taught me. It's oh, yes. called uh, the TikTok. We uh, his wife reached out and was like, "Yeah, he just can't commit to anything." <laughs> We should, he did one got, commitment in his life, and that's that's too many already. <laughs> he's got two kids. He's got a he's got a job. I, he's yeah. busy, but it uh, just became hard to bridge the gap. So uh, how did you right fill in the, the dialogue said, without him go. there? Because honestly, losing a, a lo <laughs> losing <laughs> losing a guy that put that much, you know, the the, uh, the amount of dialogue you guys had, it must be tough to just go here's, solo. Here's the real secret of that uh, of of that that was never planned that he wasn't going to talk. Uh, our first time when we showed up to film, he just didn't say anything. Yeah. Uh, and so <laughs> that's how it was it worked, from it worked then out. on. <laughs> it worked out. It was such a good dynamic. And it's still a good dynamic, of course. Um, let's talk about Moose Jaw because obviously you're very proud and you're wearing the jersey here tonight. Um, I grew up there. Uh, just a fun fact for everybody who might not know. I, I, I get the lingo. I get everything because I, you know, walk them out, grew up walking around there and I went to summer camps and stuff there and all the places. I went to a lot of Moose Jaw Warrior games growing up. Um, what is Moose Jaw known for? I know, again, Moose, the Warriors, we're, we have a lot of sports people watching. They know the Warriors, and they've, they've heard of Braden Point now, and they've heard of Theo Fleury and all those guys. But what else is Moose Jaw known for? Creative thinking. Yes. Uh, no. <laughs> if you, it's true. Like, the real honest answer is uh, probably Mac the Moose and the <laughs> tunnels of Moose Jaw, yeah. uh, which they're just opening up a new tunnel tour, which I thought was pretty cool. No I haven't way. been on it yet. but it's They uh, found more tunnels? It's called, like, Bunker 44 or something. Oh. or I don't know. But uh, I gotta go it to looks that. neat. Yeah. Spa. I got to go to that. Um, video of the spa, too. Now, now, I saw a video just this, I think it was this morning, uh, maybe last night, that you guys are running for mayor, or you specifically, maybe. I don't know. If, are you both? Is it, a, is it a dynamic duo pairing? We did put a, I don't know if you saw the YouTube one, but I put mayor and then a bracket S for <laughs> Two yeah. for the price of one. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> two heads are always better than one. Yeah, it's I would still say. Leroy and Leroy for mayor. Yeah. But it's just, it's just a joint effort. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we'll, split, we'll split the checks. So if you're elected mayor, like how, what would you change? What would be your first couple of things that you'd want to do? I think the stuff that we pointed out in, uh, in our campaign video, which yeah. you should check out yes, uh, on do. Instagram yeah. uh, and TikTok and YouTube, please yeah. go to our YouTube. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's where, we, that's where we have to beg people to go, please go to our YouTube. Seriously, guys. <laughs> it's funny how that works now, though, is like YouTube is one of the better platforms for video sharing, but the subscribers are hard to get on YouTube yeah. compared to everywhere else, it seems. It's weird. Um, yeah. But so what were some of the points that you pointed out, or do you want you know, people to go check out the video? Well, they can check out the video, but we'll give some of the highlights. Like, I think, <laughs> uh, you know, changing the uh, the clock on City Hall to a digital clock with AM, FM radio. Yes. You know, the Roman numerals and the big hand little hand can be hard yeah, to read just so. blaring the radio out all day long from the tower that's right see yeah. it'd be great yeah, uh we can change uh main street south we said it doesn't make sense it doesn't meet up with main street north it's a one way so let's just change it to leroy and leroy drive you know just something neutral that <laughs> yeah. everyone can agree on i think that's pretty neutral yeah and well you... they will build off of that kind of stuff yeah absolutely i think that's perfect um so the warrior season is coming up. We, you're wearing the jersey. We talked about the Warriors a little bit. Um, sounds like there's going to be some fans in the building again. That's got to be exciting. Are you guys? Do you have any plans or anything on going to the games or, or you know meeting up with some fans at the games or what, what's? Is there any plans in the works? Well, for for uh, those from Moose Jaw, it's not hard to find us at the games. Uh, you just have to be looking a little harder because we're both at every single one. Right. Or at least I am. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, we're looking forward to the season. It's been it's been exciting just to get back in the rink again and see live hockey like i didn't see any in the hub last year so just to be yeah 
It's oh, that's incredible. Great. And so I know you've been on the ice with the Warriors in the past. Uh, what were some of the biggest lessons you learned th during that? Because I was a couple years ago now that you guys did that. And I, one of the players, um, I knew one of the players that you were with that day. So I always thought it was a little funny that, you know, I had that connection. But what were some of the things you learned that day? <laughs> Well, we learned that uh, that the other Leroy uh, is a terrible goaltender. Yeah, I noticed that uh, was yeah. one thing. <laughs> yeah. um, and that was a that was a fun one. We uh, we talked to the Warriors and we said, "Yeah, let's uh, send out some of your uh, your best players and we'll uh, do this video up." And nothing against the guys who who they sent out, uh, but uh, Rooster Tristan DeRoos, yeah, probably not in the NHL. Matthew Benson, probably not in the NHL. The like five guys who were drafted to the NHL. Uh, probably could have taught us a little more, but yeah. uh, they uh, they taught us how to take a slap shot and miss the net. It was uh, it was good. We learned a lot that day. You know, that's a valuable lesson. Uh, <laughs> you need to know how to do that for sure. Um, so you recently went to your namesake, Leroy Saskatchewan, and you know it was such an iconic video. Uh, it's it's going to stand the test of time. It's it's really one of those ones you're going to have to frame up on the wall in terms of episodes. Um, so was there like a parade? Were they? Did they? Did they appoint you mayor while Let you me, were there? Can I, without releasing it? L listen, we'll just. Uh oh. Can I? Are we getting breaking? We can news? give them like a real vague idea. So in the in the news shortly before we went to Leroy was a certain individual who, allegedly may or may not have flown an aircraft and landed it oh, at right. an ice yeah. cream shop. Uh huh. Uh, we may or may not have have met this person wow. uh, we may or may not have flown with this person um but that's all i can say because we're not allowed to release the video yet so I, that was extremely vague i don't get it <laughs> <laughs> so wow so that hasn't happened that okay i'm just gonna leave it there because you know what i feel like i might get sued if i keep talking no but so, what so go oh, ahead Nick. so i was uh, just Leroy. saying circling back to the warriors so i've got a question for you because you kind of know hockey a little bit probably as well or better than anybody else yeah. i know so I've been telling... No, Tristan Drews isn't that good. I, I know Tristan, um, so that's why. <laughs> I've basically been telling anybody that'll listen that Jaeger's a first-round pick. Braden Jaeger, yeah. And he's a future world junior. Yes. Uh, maybe one or two years. Is this true, or am I making all this up? You're not wrong. No, Braden Jaeger. Like, so this was the conversation going into that draft for the WHL was Connor Bedard, Braden Jaeger, and they both wanted exceptional status. Jaeger was this close to getting it. So he's like right there. Uh, so you're not wrong at all. Um, he's going into his 16-year-old year, so is Connor Bedard. Bedard's already been to all of the Hockey Canada camps and everything. I don't think Jaeger has been to the same ones that he's been to in terms of age groups. So I think Bedard might get there first, but I think Jaeger's right behind him. It's, it's going to be – it's an amazing time, and since you're here, this is going to be great, because it's an amazing time for the rivalry, the Moose Jaw-Regina rivalry, because – Bedard's coming along, but Moose Jaw has a lot of good young guys too, especially with Braden Yeager. So it's a great time. You, you know what it flashes back to in my head it was being a kid going to the Civic Center, the old crush can. It was the worst hockey rink on the planet, but it was but the, the best, best hockey rink as a fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best. It was the loudest rink ever. It was built like a half pipe, yeah. uh, which was ridiculous. And but literally <laughs> tin roof. So like the sound just bounced right back down and just kept going. So it just, that's why it was so loud. <laughs> but it takes me back to uh, being a kid. You know, like eight, nine years old and watching Theron Fleury and Joe Sackick yeah. go head right. to head, right? Yeah. Like two guys who wound up being unbelievable in the NHL. And uh, so that's that's what I flash to when I'm when I'm picturing this uh, Bedard Jaeger rivalry that I think we'll see over the next couple of years. Uh, yeah. It's going to be fun to watch. There was and th now that was a different era of hockey, of course, but there was as many fights as there were on the ice. There was triple as many in the stands. My, <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> the amount of cousins I have that have fight stories uh, from Moose Jaw Regina games back in the day is a little high. My uh, uh, my dad used to, <laughs> when I was a kid, get into all the games for free oh. uh, because him and my uncle would bring drums with them. Yeah. And they were so loud that they would just get the whole rink cheering. Uh, so, so good I old, uh, old Kelly Rampel yeah. was, yes. was the guy who said, you guys, as long as you guys are getting the fans going like that, don't worry about it. You don't Free have to marketing. pay. So it was a full season, and then I think Kelly moved on, and they had to buy tickets again. But Shout out to the Silver <laughs> But Fox. it was great. Oh, that guy's yeah. a legend. Yeah. Um, so... One thing um, I noticed about since you launched your page, and I'm a, I'm a day one here, guys. Like, I've been around since the start. So I've uh, always been a fan, and I've loved watching you guys go from here to here to here to here. Uh, but a lot of celebrities have picked up on your videos in the last couple of months here, especially, like you said, since you launched the TikTok channel. Um, who, feel free to, you know, watch your toes drop a few names here. Um, who are some of the names that you've noticed, you know, sharing you on Instagram? And I've seen a few names. Uh 
The guy from Letterkenny was probably one of the biggest ones. What's his uh, name? Again? Dylan Playfair. Dylan Playfair. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, that one. That one blew our, blew my mind. I was in the mall, literally in the mall, standing at the uh, kiosk, trading in my phone, and I got my old cell phone in my hand, and I just I'm waiting because they're setting everything up and everything. So I scroll through, and all of a sudden I'm like, "What's this?" And I message Leroy behind the camera and yeah that was fantastic and then the other big one was actually funny uh Hank Green stitched one of our uh Ooh, one of our videos on TikTok yeah. and I uh was it the sign question mark sign one yeah yes <laughs> so I I messaged uh old Leroy behind the camera here and I'm like hey some Hank Green guy uh just <laughs> just retweeted our thing and he had a, a fangirl moment at that I think oh well for sure like that's a big one yeah well he's he's a big deal on the yeah. internet like best-selling author big science guy big tech guy like he's yeah. all over the place yeah yeah because my wife's a teacher so she yeah has been following him for like 10 years so yeah, yeah she was pretty amazed at that um so my dad's checking in uh Lira behind the camera you'll remember this because we were having uh, beverages one evening and we figured out the word nearly related yes um, possibly are. so <laughs> my dad said is there a lamb wilson monroe thing going on here and i was <laughs> like oh um, yeah no so it's just funny because my dad in small town obviously a lot of your videos deal with small towns but one thing that i've noticed small town saskatchewan people love doing is talking about whose friends married who and talking about which farms they grew up next to and it just turns out that my dad grew up literally next door to his dad <laughs> yeah uh, so like we we didn't know each other before a couple years ago and so it's just funny that that happened he, um, laughs, he, he laughs every time because whenever we're driving around the small towns i'll always say like oh that auger is in a weird spot we should do a video <laughs> on it and then he's just like what does that even mean well, <laughs> it's it's valuable information but is he what says it is. the words and they make sense yeah <laughs> yeah, if you ever hear me talking about any kind of farming equipment, it's because Leroy behind the camera told me what it was. Yeah. I'd be like, that shooty, spinny thing there. That's and he's all like, that's know. an auger. I'm like, okay, let's call it that instead then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, some comments here as we go. John Ohm again from Winnipeg. We don't have to hold that against him. But he says, Leroy, very fascinating and funny. Go follow him, John. You probably already do. Um, now he's saying he's going to check out your YouTube channel. So there you go. You got Fantastic. one. You got Thank one. you. So, yes. Um, Myron, uh, checking in from Ontario, says Moose Jaw is also known for Islanders legend Clark Gillies. Yeah. Fun fact. That's another yes, one. a good one. Yeah. Um, I think, have I told you my Clark Gillies story? I've told it on this show a couple times, I think. So I don't know if I need to tell again. I was bartending at the Delta Regina. Guy, 50, 60 year old guy comes in. I didn't think of much of it. We chatted hockey for like an hour. And then he saw my name tag and he's like, Hey, I like your name. And I'm like, Oh, thanks. He's like, That's my name too. I'm like, Psh. What's your name? And he's like, Clark Gillies. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I'm like, I know who Clark Gillies is, but I didn't realize it was him. He doesn't look the same as he used to. He used to have a big afro. Uh, he doesn't anymore. Uh, so anyways, um, did the third Leroy go to Winnipeg and leave his hotel room after 8 p.m.? Somebody asked. <laughs> that, that could be what happened to him. <laughs> Maybe that oh, was it. One more shout out because we're on like, I told Clark, this is where I get my sports news is from him. Yes, thank you. Uh, legitimately on TikTok. I'll get all my breaking news from Clark popping on there. Uh, <laughs> One of the biggest follows for me as a Montreal Canadiens fan, Brandon Gallagher. They f he followed you on Yeah, that? he follows ah. us on uh, TikTok. So it was right after the playoffs I oh, saw yeah. this. So I sent him a message and uh, was like, you know, hey, as a Habs fan, super proud of the run you guys went on. Love to have you in a video sometime. And he was like, yeah, absolutely. Let's set it up sometime. So oh. one day yeah. uh, we'll, uh, we'll line that one up. But yeah, I, as I was thinking about names, I had to go back to that one because Galley is one of my favorite Habs. He's a, he's a proud Western Canadian, so he gets it. He totally gets it. <laughs> um, so uh, the names, yeah, the other famous one, um, what L engineering. <laughs> What's that one? No, we just have, there's a couple of uh, people that always pop up and he's one of the, he sent us a mug. So oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, what, a TikTok creator. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I often get chirped by you, Leroy, in my TikTok lives um, because I'm a Leafs fan and you're not. Uh, so you like to uh, chirp me, you know, you say Montreal today. I had an impression that you might have been a Boston fan at some point. No? Oh, no. Montreal. Nope. Yeah, uh, we, we yeah, can share Montreal. the hatred for Boston. That's Yeah. Fine. No, my wife's from Massachusetts. Okay. And uh, so when we met, we met playing a game on Facebook, but... Uh, it's a very Leroy thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so we met playing a game on Facebook, and uh, as we got talking... Uh, we made an agreement that uh, I would cheer for the Boston Red Sox and she would okay. cheer for the Montreal Canadiens. Yep. And there's all That's peace a good trade-off. Yeah, I think so. That's hard to do for a Boston, per a Massachusetts person in, in general to cheer for Montreal. Uh, that's a big deal. 
Oh, that's, yeah. It's, that's it's, a commitment. It's a big sacrifice. Talk about commitment. You know? That's what I think. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, now, you mentioned earlier that you ditched us for the Riders a couple weeks ago. The Riders yeah. cheerleaders specifically, let's say. And maybe a good trade I made the team. I heard this. So tell me about your experience <laughs> with the cheerleaders. Uh, they, I'm <laughs> honorary. I'm a member with honor. Uh, yeah, yeah. They were so they were so welcoming and so fun. We had so so much fun there. It was funny. Uh, that was that was maybe one of my favorite videos we've done uh, because we had so much fun with them. I, I told Leroy behind the camera that that night I hardly slept because I was thinking of other ideas that we could have worked into our video afterwards. Right. Um, so it was it was one of those experiences. We were supposed Part to go two. for half an hour. I think we were there for an hour with them. So yeah. they were so accommodating. We had so much fun there. It looked fun. Just uh, a the great lighting group. was great. That was weird. The lighting in there is really good. It's <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Really good for videos, especially <laughs> after a storm. The sky was really you know gloomy and cloudy. And anyways, that was crazy. Um, so we talked about a lot of stuff that you've done. What's what's next? What's what's coming up? Outside of outside of potential Leroy ice cream uh, bandit. Uh, uh, videos. I, we've got we've got a couple of videos in the can that we, or our, that Leroy behind the camera is working on. Yeah. I don't do any of the technical stuff. Uh, I just show up and talk. It's the best but part. Uh, we've got a couple of good videos coming from our Winnipeg trip, and we're hoping uh, our next two trips uh, we want to go southern Ontario uh, and we want to go Vancouver. So can I say that? I just did. I mean, you want <laughs> you want to go. I mean, yeah. Those are like you know. I want to go to a lot expand. of places. We're trying to go to more and more of Canada, yeah. and we'd like to cross the border uh, south at some point as well. Uh, there's a guy, another guy on TikTok. I don't know if you've seen him, uh, Justin the Real Sheely. He hits things with a hammer. He's in Montana. He's great. He's in I gotta Montana. Follow. This sounds extremely satisfying. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. He just like took a can of squeeze cheese and hit it with a hammer to see what happens. It's, it's this, great. Okay, hold on. So <laughs> give me a minute here. <laughs> I'm gonna go follow this yeah. guy. So uh, that we, uh, he's in Montana, and I'd love to do a video with him, but we can't drive across the borders yet. So yeah. for now, we're just gonna continue going uh, east and west in Canada. I think. And Keep doing it keep reaching basically we're we're literally doing it as the money comes in so the more shirts we sell the hey more go, buy a shirt. Go. go buy a shirt so these guys can go hit a cheese can with a hammer in montana please <laughs> That's more youtube subscribers we get yeah, yeah exactly um so uh colin mackinall these two checking in in ottawa maybe another place you guys might have to get Absolutely. to maybe ch hang out with jt justin trudeau he just got reelected. maybe you can <laughs> hang out with him uh we don't have to get into that uh the, the he says the leroys need to go to uranium city and mine some of that radioactive gold in the northernmost part of the rectangle obviously saskatchewan rectangular um is there? Have you not been to a town in Saskatchewan yet? Well, I mean, we haven't been to most towns in Saskatchewan, <laughs> probably. When you break it down, it's surprising like, how many there are. Yeah, and we get yeah. people all the time who, I, and we so appreciate it. All the people who send us messages and tell us you need to see this and that, uh, and we try to respond and track them all, but it's hard. Uh, but yeah, there's a million places in Saskatchewan we could still go to, and hopefully we'll get to at some. Have point. you been to Climax yet? No, it's on the list. It's it'll be the climax of your journey, I think. <laughs> that's, hey, right? That's right. <laughs> um, okay, that's great. So tell us where everybody can follow you, because again, we need to get your YouTube subscribers up. So is it just Leroy and Leroy? Absolutely everywhere. Everywhere you go, yeah. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. Moose Jaw. Leroy and Leroy. Yeah, yeah just wander down just Main Street. That's what I, I told Rod when we were on his show. Just wander down Main Street and yell Leroy. And yeah, you'll find us. You'll find us. Although I said that jokingly then. Now uh, it happens quite a bit. We'll be out <laughs> and people just drive by screaming Leroy out the window. It's well, fun. I saw your mayor video. You're like, can you please stop honking? We're trying to film. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, super appreciate you being here. Thanks for coming in front of the camera tonight. Leroy behind the camera. And uh, best of luck, best success. We're all cheering for you here. We're all following. So let's do this again before too long. Thanks for having us on. I appreciate it. Maybe yes, we'll go to a Warriors so much, game. Clark. How about that? That'd be fun. Max, you want to go to a Warriors game? All right. We'll make Done. the journey down there and hang out with you guys next time. Nice. Sound good? Yeah, absolutely. All we'll right. come into Regina for a game too. Maybe. I'm in. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to take a, a bit of a break. Max, you're coming in here, right? That's next segment. We're going to have our buddy from Hoop Life come in next. We're going to talk basketball and a whole lot more. We have a lot to get to. And plus, later in the show, uh, as Leroy con continues to knock over our flamingo, the second he just hates that flamingo. Did, did, he, did a flamingo hurt you in your past life, Leroy, behind the camera? Uh, but when we come back later in the show... <laughs> He tried to be so graceful. I'll give him credit. He tried to be graceful uh, and pull the chair out, but the chair clipped the flamingo. There you go. Thank you, Leroy. Um, fixing that.
beautiful. Um, we have we have baseball to talk about and NFL Week Three picks coming up later in the show as well. So stick around. We'll be back in two and a half minutes. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. IKS Live, the proud producer of The Rod Peterson Show and The Recovery Hour. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. My, oh my, what a segment. Leroy and Leroy, are you familiar with them, Zachary, at all? Well, I have scrolled through the TikTok page. <laughs> it has come across my For You, and uh, I have indulged. Some of sure. Saskatchewan's finest right there. Well, I tell you what, you guys, after that one, I know Zachary's going to have a fun time following that, but uh, Zachary Tamlin, hoop life, basketball training. How are you doing tonight, Zach? I'm doing well. You kind of are taking me away from... Uh, Away from our training, we actually have sessions tonight, so you're taking away from uh, from what I love. Gotcha. Uh, but uh, all good. It's all the off sure. the court work, right? At the yeah. end of the day, right? It's interviews, it's paparazzi, it's autographs. That, that that's this side of the job, right? So yeah, it was about time way. we initiate ourselves over here. Absolutely, so. good stuff, my man. So you said you got sessions going on right now. Obviously, I, I've been following you guys on Instagram as as we do, anyways. You guys are fantastic partners of ours, have been for nearly a year now. So you guys are kind of entering the phase of starting up the inaugural Hoop Life Basketball League. What are the preparations? been like for that to start off uh i think with everything comes a little bit of hectic sure. uh, i know uh our facility is on the way and we're preparing as best we can uh to get this going and uh, get it ready by october and mm -hmm. uh moving forward we're just super excited uh, allowing us to have this opportunity like when i was growing up playing basketball uh, i grew up outside of lumsden mm -hmm. so just on this small little acreage and what i had i had a little cement pad mm -hmm. and uh, that was my hoop life right like that's yeah. where i i, I really grabbed and got a hold of my dreams uh, and now we have an opportunity to present this entire facility which is just incredible 
incredible and something I, I, I dreamed of only when I was young. And so now that we have an opportunity to give back, it's just great. Well, you know what? It's fantastic, actually. And then when, so Andrew texted me today saying that you were going to be coming on the show and he says, he's our branding and marketing guy. And I'm like, fantastic because that's exactly what I do for this show as well as my own professional life so I was like all right sweet we're gonna have a conversation with a dude with some parallels here and obviously like you said a little bit off air a little bit newer to the role but how have things been going so far and I guess in terms of the branding and marketing side of a very vastly growing company as quickly as it's been as well too what have the challenges been like so far and I guess what have been some of the enjoyments thus yeah. far in your short tenure at Hoop Life definitely like we'll start with the challenges like for sure getting tossed in here uh, I, I love it like I love mm-hmm. this type of work it is something that I have been interested in in a while and uh, as uh, although I've never really taken a position like this mm-hmm. before it's something that I've really really wanted to grab a hold of and really learn as much as I can uh, through what Andrew and uh, the guys have really taught me um, but moving forward with, uh, with, with some more challenges, uh, just with the league starting, our facility going, there's just so much to kind of promote, right? Sure. And so it's a little bit, uh, keeps you a little bit up at night and a little bit uneasy, but it's, uh, it's all for the better, for sure. Absolutely. Having this opportunity to give back is really, it really keeps you going. It really keeps you going. 100%. So. No, that's awesome, man. At the end of the day, you guys are truly creating groundbreaking initiatives in this city, this province, this side of the country. So I can imagine it's quite hectic. But again, at the end of the day, it's just amazing to see the growth and how rapid it's been over the course of time. And I must say this as well, too. Every time the guys from Hoop Life, as you can tell, very fashion forward fellas that join us on the program. I tell you what, man, they always got the best gear. Squad 10, 10 percent off. Got to make sure we get that plug in there. But uh, no, man, let's uh, again, as you alluded to, right, you you grew up loving basketball. Let's talk some basketball. It is now time for the corner three presented by Hoop Life. And we have got some topics provided to us by our main man, Zachary Tamlin here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So. Kicking off the graphic, as you see, the first thing that we wanted to talk about is what is actually going on with Ben Simmons right now? Obviously, the offseason's been kind of a tumultuous one for the Philadelphia 76ers guard. And, like, what is what is going on there? What do you think is going to be happening in terms of a resolution to this issue that has, I guess, progressed throughout the entire offseason? Does he get moved? Well, Does he stay? What happens? As, as we all are on our phones, I keep those notifications live. And uh, I seen yesterday it was a... Uh, they're trying to work out as best they can to kind of get him into training camp, push him and uh, get him as a part of the team because the season's up here. And at least for trade value purposes, like you'd want him there. And uh, and then today I, I wake up and it was like, there's no way I, <laughs> I'm playing in this city, putting that jersey back on. And it's wow. really it's really hard to think uh, of, of something like that. You, you take a, such a big chance with a guy like that, drafting him, paying him over $100 million. And uh, you always want it to pan out. And just the difficulties of, of moving a player like that, like the magnitude that that's going to cause of, of how it's not going to be just like a one-on-one on, one, one trade. It just won't be. You're going to have to get an all-star. You're going to have to get picks. You're going to have to get some other role players involved in that trade to get a guy like Ben. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't think a whole lot of teams really have the, the assets to really move for a player like that. For sure. Because <laughs> as, much as, he's, uh, as much as he has his faults, like he's still – all defensive team he is mm-hmm. still averaging 20 plus points a game in this league and in the, in the grownest of mans of leagues so I, I have uh, the utmost respect for a guy like that for sure yeah absolutely he still brings a lot to the table I mean again a two-way basketball player right if maybe his shooting percentage hasn't been fantastic over the last couple of seasons is what it is but as you alluded to he can still be a very valuable member of many teams across the association and before we continue because again a common theme with the boys at hoop life and I must Andrew, if you're watching right now, was this one of the interview questions for Zachary? Is he a Lakers fan? And it was ultimately that the question that got you the job? Or who are you a fan of, Zachary? Um, so a little backstory. Andrew and I actually went to the same high school. Oh, okay, so we've gotcha. had this connection from day one. For and sure. I am happy to say, and finally that I'm on here, I can finally say that uh, we're the LeBron family over oh, here. Oh, boy. For hey, sure. We're the LeBron family. <laughs> I, I love other players. I love what other players can do on the floor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the things that they can bring to the table. But that guy, that guy has got my number. And uh, funny enough, I'm born on June 23rd, 0623. Oh, man. Well, doesn't that just work out well? If you're a guy that believes in the zodiac signs Talk and the stars are aligning. Come on. The stars are aligning. 100%, so, man. Good from, stuff. From day one, I've just never really turned back. Although mm-hmm. when the Kobe-LeBron uh, rivalry is much stronger than, than it is now, uh, I couldn't deny kind of Kobe's greatness either. So I, I, I teetered. I, I, I cheated a little bit. I teetered on both sides of a Kobe to, to a LeBron. But 
Absolutely. And with so much premier talent, I guess that brings us into the next topic on the corner three, right? And maybe I know your answer already, but again, just understanding that you're a big basketball fan, you obviously look league wide in terms of your coverage. Who is the best player in the world right now? Player in the world. I think there's categories in how we can okay. prioritize this question of like, who is the best score in comparison to player? Now, score and the one that just jumps right at me is Kevin Durant. Yep. Like, there's 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 no one second to him in that in that and being considered the the best player in the world is is, is just remarkable when you're up up against guys like LeBron, uh, mm -hmm. from who's been doing it for so so long. Uh, but from a scoring standpoint, Kevin Durant really takes the cake for me. His fluidity on the floor, uh, where he can just rise up and shoot over anybody. I'm not saying LeBron can't do that, uh, but there are limitations to LeBron's game due to, I think, his size uh, sure. and his stature in comparison to Kevin Durant. Just his long, lanky mm -hmm. style, uh, his ability to put the ball on the floor. Um, so it's, it's it's definitely a one and two. I guess you could say a one A. One mm -hmm. A B, mm -hmm. uh, but those are my top two guys. Followed very closely by Steph and some other guys that are almost averaging 30 points per game still, which will always forever blow my mind that guys can do that throughout the course of an NBA season. Absolutely. There's just tons of premier talent around the league, right? You look at Giannis, who's fresh off a championship, Luka Doncic in Dallas. It's just there's a lot of names, as you said, that you could categorize them. But going to Kevin Durant, just with him being a focal point of that particular topic, one, Looks like he's been hitting the gym. He's 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 looking like he's not exactly uh, Twiggy McGee out there in terms of the legs. Because that was always the thing when I watched Kevin Durant was, how does he even move without snapping a leg? I just don't understand how, how that how works. How can he go into all this contact and just be fine, or even just go over the top of them, right, and exactly. just absolutely explode in a game at any at any moment, mm -hmm. which was really crazy for me. Like I I really took a liking to him as soon as he as soon as he was in Oklahoma City, mm -hmm. and uh, I had a friend who that was his favorite team. So there's our rivalry. Uh, and just the things that he can do, uh, the way that he can play in any to any type of system. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I love players like that who can just flow, and it's it's just playing the game at that point. Absolutely. You're just you're just playing a game, no matter the other four that are on there. Just do it together and 100%. get the job done, which uh, he's been doing, right? Whenever he's healthy. Absolutely. That close. That close? Exactly. And being that premier talent, right, now having the physical stature to stand up to that contact, right, knowing that, I guess, the evolution of his career, he wasn't just fine with settling as being, okay, I'm a premier scorer, I'm a premier shooter, I'm going to rest on my laurels here, I'm going to go out, I'm going to continue to develop physically and mm -hmm. add another dimension to his game. Physically, if he's looking that well ahead of the season, I don't know anybody that can stop him right now. But I guess one question to finish on Kevin Durant was, I'm going to put you on the spot here. I'm ready. If he's healthy, does Golden State beat the Raptors in 2019? Now remember, we've got tens of Raptors fans watching this program right now, so. <laughs> I mean, if we look at it from a real standpoint. Oh, we're going diplomatic, all right. Well, Let's just take the, <laughs> the series before with Toronto. Mm -hmm. What a shot. Yep. For one, what a shot. But... I, I still believe when you got that type of talent on your team, especially even if Clay was there. Like sure. if, if Clay was there, that's a different question. If it's just Kevin coming back, mm -hmm. I think that's a series. I think that's a series of really uh, close and competitive game. Uh, each and every game would be competitive. And uh, I don't know. I, I'll do a quick answer. Definitely, let's go Golden State. We'll let's go, go Golden, Golden State. State. We're, we're gonna, gonna put throw it out it there. Hey, you know what? <laughs> we're gonna throw it against. Hey, it. all I can do is respect the answer, man. At the end of the day, that's the best part about being hey, a fan, I see right? Talent. Those bar I see talk talent levels. on the floor like yeah. that. I, I'm going in that direction. Absolutely. Well, I know that the Raptors fans will probably disagree with you because that's just the way that we're wired. But at the end of the day, no, I'm with you, man. There's a ton of talent on that Golden State team, and at the end of the day, it's who's healthier, right? Who's right. who's that team that's gonna, I guess, make it to the final day? But yeah, either way, Raptors. Raptors got their chip and the dip, as Drake would like to say. And oh, they got it. Leading that into our final topic on the corner three here, will the Lakers, you and Andrew's boys, will this gang of misfits be enough to win their chip this year? Now, this is a solid group, in my opinion. Uh, I think the biggest controversy that we're really going to have to talk about throughout the year is going to be uh, who's dressing better, Carmelo Anthony or Russell Westbrook, or who's going to come with the most egregious outfit uh, yeah. each and every day. Uh, the, Could it be a distraction in the locker room, right? That's what I'm worried about. That, that's what I was thinking <laughs> as well. But then you look at photos from uh, Anthony Davis's most mm -hmm. recent wedding, 
they're all there. Oh, they're yeah. all there enjoying each other's company, and that's preseason. That's before everything's mm -hmm. getting going, and so you can kind of see the camaraderie as much as uh, as much as you kind of want to see it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I have full faith in these guys. If they're if they're 100 healthy, and I'm I'm praying that the whole league is this year. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we've had too many of these years where we're missing too many big stars, too many big names, too many big time players. Uh, uh, for us to continue this way. I, I want to see the best talent on the floor mm -hmm. at all times. Absolutely. And, uh, moving forward, that's the same as the Hoop Life League. We want, we want these guys hooping. We want them out there, and we want to we provide the best that we can for them, keep for them sure. safe as well. Well, you guys sure. are doing a hell of a job of that, and I mean, I guess to that end, I've got my free throw left for you here, and I'm not too sure how much you followed the NBA draft this year, but again, being a Canadian podcast anyways, we've got to throw a little Raptors question in oh, there. Yeah. Do you think that Scotty Barnes can be an impact player immediately for the Toronto Raptors in this phase of their transition? I mean, from what I've seen of him, just through clips primarily, mm -hmm. it's just he's, it seems like he has the right attitude mm -hmm. uh, when he approaches the game. He's really humble about, uh, humble in his approach, mm -hmm. uh, willing to take uh, take advice from kind of anywhere it seems. Uh, but also having that confidence or that inner confidence within yourself that like we're going to get the job done. Now, will it translate immediately to? the highest of level in this sport um it's to be seen i think that's a, a space that we can put that but when you have a guy like og ananobi uh, on that squad too it's just imagine those practices th those guys going head to head uh playing against each other playing with each other it's just a he, he has a bright future for sure mm -hmm. uh it's just about uh understanding the moment and taking advantage for sure absolutely and we've got we've got your boy andrew chiming in he says LeBron would eat KD. I Going know. back to our previous discussion. Know, but again, maybe that's a water cooler talk for tomorrow at Hoop Life. I don't know. But I don't know. Either way, Andrew chiming in with some good takes as always. But I guess now what it leads to for us, Zachary, is we've kind of covered the NBA. We've covered the association a little bit. What is going on at Hoop Life for the next little while? And again, feel free to take your time because we know it's a lot. Um, but it's a lot of exciting stuff. What, what are on the horizon? What's currently in the hopper over at Hoop Life? Well, what's awesome now, we have an opportunity to, to, to run sessions. So we have our hour sessions mm -hmm. uh, running throughout the entirety of the week, and we want to do that all throughout the year so that uh, basketball is kind of nonstop at that point, uh, something that we never really had the opportunity to do, and I want to bring back to like some personal experiences here. It's like, uh, yeah, I grew up on that farm, but uh, once I even moved into the city here in Regina, uh, things were just limited. It was limited to get into even my own school. Uh, it was limited uh, when I'd go to either the university or the YMCA, all these spots, and just uh, not having the opportunity to really work on your skills and hone your skills. It was more so just like this uh, personal, you'd play with your friends, it's just pick up basketball as much as you can get better at that. Uh, we, I really think feel like I missed a, a whole lot of time that I could have spent developing my game. And so the fact that we have all this time on our hands and these this availability for for our parents and our athletes, uh, moving forward, this guy's kind of the limit into where we can take these kids. And it's not necessarily just on the floor, but off the floor, uh, trying to build these kids up to be successful individuals, not just uh, not just good basketball players, you know. And so that's one of the super exciting things that we have going on. Uh, as well, like we mentioned before, the Hoop Life League, uh, grades uh, grades three to eight, uh, boys and girls, tryouts this Saturday, mm -hmm. September 25th. We expect everybody to be there, as many of you guys as possible. We wanna we wanna offer this opportunity to everybody. Like uh, we wanna be a very community based approach here, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this is just a giving back opportunity. Uh, we've never really had a professional league like this before, mm -hmm. uh, where we're going to build up the atmosphere, build up the players, uh, have film of all of it, mm -hmm. right? Something that we can recollect on and, and look back on, uh, something that I don't personally have, right? And so trying to think of all the tools uh, that we can provide for these kids mm -hmm. uh, has just been kind of the most fun part of thinking the stuff that either we m missed out on, but now we kind of get that... Uh, we get that inner love and that inner thing that we were missing, I guess sure. you could say, you know? Absolutely. So that, that, that's what's trending so well for us is, is uh, the camaraderie between, the, between Andrew, Habib, myself, mm -hmm. Keegan, Austin. Got to give my shout outs. Mm -hmm. um, you guys have a hell of a squad over that, that's and, for sure. And, and the way that we can communicate and work together, uh, sky's the limit for us, in my personal opinion. Absolutely. And I know that producer Clark over here, Andrew, I'm not too sure if his professional tryout offer got lost in the mail to join this league or again it, it might just be an age requirement thing we're still working out the kinks there uh, 
Well, exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, Clark, you do what you can. It's not much, but we, we still love you. Uh, but, but Zachary, I tell you what, Andrew, I know you're watching right now. You got a good one right here in this young man. Uh, at the end of the day, wishing you guys all the best. We're really excited to continue to check things out with you guys, check in on the progress, the, the ever-evolving rapid progress that occurs on a daily basis with you guys. It's just a lot of fun to be a part of, and we hope to sit down with you again and chat soon, Zachary. This has been a lot of fun, and can't wait to do it again. Max Clark, I know I may not be as handsome <laughs> as Andrew. <laughs> Uh, however, it was a great time here, and I really appreciate it. Fantastic. Appreciate it a lot. Absolutely. We appreciate you guys. Well, 100%. <laughs> Compliments all around. Good stuff on a Tuesday night. Positive vibes on a Tuesday. But that's going to do it for this segment brought to you by our friends over at Hoop Life Basketball Training. Make sure you guys go check out their website for everything. Sessions, camps, the league's getting going. The new building is going up. There's just so much happening uh, over at Hoop Life. Everything is happening. Everything is happening. And make sure, Squad 10... We got, we got to get that in there. Apparel, camps, sessions, all the good stuff from our friends over at Hoop Life. 10% off. 10% off. I, man, this guy, he's just got it. He's got it, Andrew. I Guys think you thought I've never viewed this before, <laughs> but I've been up in those comments. He, he I have been up in those comments. He's, did, he's done his scouting report, but either way, Zachary, thanks again for the time, my friend, and we'll make sure that we catch up with you again soon. Coming up after the break, you guys, there's just so much Bluebird block to talk about here. I can't even... I, I'm a little hot under the collar, as you could say. Coming up in the original 16, nightcap. Like I said, I got to go this slowly because, as you can tell, red hair, a little fiery right now with all the things happening in Blue Jayville. But either way, we'll see you guys in two and a half minutes as we uh, finish up the night with a little blue bird block. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Everyday hoop life. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. IKS Live, the proud producer of The Rod Peterson Show and The Recovery. Recovery hour. Visit us at IKSLive.ca. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. These aren't ours, by the way. I stole them.
All right. This this night has turned into a very productive night. Very productive. Uh, I just switched my Twitter handle. I just switched my Instagram name. Thanks to the Leroy's. They were, we had a little branding talk after. Consulting, hey? Yeah, they were consulting. We just, had, we just had the branding guy from Hoop Life I on, know. too. Man. It's like, been a great gotta... night. Did you switch my mic around, Max? Probably. I'm a little shorter in stature, you it know? It feels like you moved it down. Doesn't matter. Um, we're, I'm already into it, uh, the Great Western Yeah, nightcap. you couldn't wait for the cap, um, hey? I got this hard seltzer going early, and uh, we ha- I found some of these Great Western lights I'm pretty mm-hmm. excited to crack open. So you can go ahead and crack Actually, one pass me yours to crack. Um, I have an announcement. As it were. You have two um, in front of you, Max. I do have two in front of me, but the, the announcement is pertaining to uh, my consumption an intervention? of the alcohol at the moment. Not due to the fact that the products at Great Western and You're Original Sixteen aren't fantastic. I'm taking a sabbatical. Wow. A sabbatical as we continue the vocabulary. Why are you wanting my beer then? I'm not Because I want to crack it for the uh, ASMR factor. Oh, you want to do it. But how, gonna, how am I going to get it back? Well, I'm fit, almost done fit, this. It, there's always a... No, there's that's not it. There's always a way to do it. Ooh, terrible toss. Good catch. Great grab. Um, we're going to get into the Bluebird block here after Max gives us the crack. You want to do we it? Gotta, we got to give it the Kraken, of course. Yeah. And again, fantastic products. Yes. I'm just uh, I'm just going to take, take a minute as it's it were. A, Try to lose some weight. It's a choice. Yep. That's fair. Oh, it still sounds so refreshing and now crispy. Now you're going to have one, aren't you? <sighs> no, I, I can't succumb to the peer pressure. That's fair. I just can't That's do it. That's fair, and we don't want to You let push me know when anyway. you're ready for it, and I'll make sure that okay. it gets to you and not I'll, back to the other dugout. I'll wrap up my seltzer, and we'll yeah. get going. Oh, pro tip, um, turn your phone We're going to go into the Bluebird life. block now because we do have a few things to get to. Not a ton, obviously. The Jays are hot in it right now, and I'm, I have the game on. A few it big is, topics. It is the bottom of the ninth with two outs. Jordan Romano is on the mound. It is a two and one count to Choi. I can't remember his first name. Uh, G-Man. G-Man, G-Man Choi. Choi. He's, it's a two outs, nobody on base, 4-2, Blue Jays lead. Right now, Jordan Romano's doing his little wiggle. You know how he does so that. So speaking of the Bluebird block, funny how presented by strike RBI two. Baseball and Softball Training. Yeah. Um, I just got a text from Mr. Paul Vogelsang, strength oh, hey, and conditioning Paul. coach. The guy who Over hasn't Paul come on the show Vogelsang. yet. you got to get on the show. Not quite, but you know what? I was at his housewarming on the weekend, mm-hmm. and uh, the man's got a fantastic pad, and uh, it was great to catch up Squad with Paul Squadcast from the Vogelsang house? We, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure he would allow it as it were. Uh, but he Hold just up. sent me a text saying, Romano pitching is legitimate must-watch TV. Love the it. guy is a lunatic, and I think he means that in the most positive of ways. That's a good thing. Because it's very, very true. So. Two and two count. I'm just going to do the wiggle. Doing the wiggle. Doing the waggle. Pitch. Oh, wow. That was like an inch an inch high, and Choi like went halfway around, but they said he didn't go, and they didn't call same, it a strike. Same, same ump as last oh, night. Oh, that could have easily been the end of the game right there. Romano even gave it a fist bump. Uh, um, so one of the one of the notes we wanted to mention was Gabriel Moreno has been called up to AAA yes, Buffalo. Uh, Gabriel Moreno is obviously the Jays' super prospect rookie uh, mm-hmm. catcher, uh, and they uh, they have high hopes for this guy. And the pitch, no, nope, didn't swing. Ball. That's a walk, actually. Um, so there is a man on base now. Okay, stop Gabriel watching. Moreno. Things were going no. really good when we weren't watching. Fair. Uh, Gabriel Moreno great. gets called up to AAA. <laughs> He's been lighting it up in AA. He got an injury. He came back, been lighting it up since he got back. They've moved him up to AAA. I don't think he ever sees the light of day in AA ever again. Nope. He's AAA from here on out. And, Max, you said uh, a hot take. By mid next season, he could be the Jays catcher. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, the trajectory that this kid's on, and I mean, it's it, the precedent's been set by Alejandro Kirk. The Jays are not too worried if you can hit at the big league level. They're not too worried about taking the slow, long, tedious development path anymore when it comes to their catching prospects. Alejandro Kirk has been a revelation in terms of his abilities. A guy that jumped from single A ball to the majors in just one short season. Uh, it wasn't even 162 games uh, in terms of development for Alejandro Kirk and the minors, and he just shot up the prospect charts like absolutely crazy so when it comes to Gabriel Moreno we've we've seen the tools we know that the pedigree's there he's gonna find a way to make his way onto this roster and by the sounds of it he might be one of the more athletic catchers that we've seen in quite some time uh in terms of a Blue Jay uniform being donned so when it comes to this kid I truly believe sky's the limit obviously in baseball you never really know what the prospects until they get to the show however I'm very optimistic about this kid I'm very high on this kid uh when it comes to Gabriel Moreno I I cannot wait until he's in a Blue Jay uniform. And I think it comes likely at the midway point of next season at the very, very, I don't want to say the latest, but for sure that's when I'm expecting him to arrive. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
just a quick note here from our friend Robin Wildy. Mm-hmm. Uh, he mentions that Great Western makes the co-op alcohol-free beer. Maybe grab one of those, Max. That might be the play. That may be the play, Robin. There's, there's still calories in alcohol-free yeah, it's, beer, though. Yeah, yeah, it's just a it's personal choice. I'm just going to take a break for a little no, bit. No, I get it. Yeah, I've been there. That's, that's all it is. I've been there. You need a break every once in a while. Exactly. Um, but, man... When you are, Delicious. when you're off the break, <laughs> exactly, uh, you know where to find this. Uh, um, you, you, multiple starts. This is how you wrote this. Multiple starts against sub 500 teams in clutch situations where he couldn't come through, and now he finds himself on the IL with a neck issue. Is that serious or just kind of a? I said it was the 10 day IL. So I mean, when there's only 15 days left in the season, it's a little bit concerning. But I think save it's, him for the playoffs. Save him for the playoffs. But man, I don't know. It's just one of those situations where you look at it. I mean, it's the Minnesota Twins and the Baltimore Orioles. Really, really tough outings for a guy that's supposed to be your staff ace. Yeah. I know that Alec Manoa has emerged. I know that Jose Barrios has been fantastic and was the ace of the Minnesota Twins. And Robbie Ray has obviously been ace like this entire year. Uh, but when it comes to Hyunjin Ryu, they signed him to be the guy. And at this point of the season, when you need those wins, that's what you're paying him the $20 million a year for. You're paying him to come through, be seven, eight innings deep against those sub-500 ball teams. So I don't know if it's a neck issue. I really like the pitcher. I really like the player. But it's just been really tough to see these outings occur at really, really bad times for this Blue Jays team. I mean... It, this wild card spot certainly isn't locked up by any stretch and they got to find ways to get these outings out of Ryu where again, he might not have another one this regular season. So it could be a situation of here's hoping the rest of the rotation can get the boys through to the playoffs and maybe he comes back and against, against good teams, Ryu has been, he's been all right this year. It's just for whatever reason, those, those teams that uh, should be automatic wins as it were, if you're uh, to throw a little money line bet down, they just haven't been for Hanjin Ryu this year. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe it was the neck injury. Maybe it's been something that's been bothering him. The other thing is, we've completely forgotten about Kevin Biggio. That's yeah. a, that's a who's, you know what? who's that guy? It's funny you mentioned <laughs> that. Shout out Great Western, by the way. Just great product. Um, just, just saying. Um, funny you mentioned that. I've seen like 12 videos on TikTok in the last like week of, remember when the duo was a trio and then it's like <laughs> and then it's like Kevin like all like romanticized and everything yeah. with all this like glittery like filters I'm like yeah. wow I did forget about Gavin VGO. I, know. I was uh, guilty of it too but I mean at the same time though uh with this off season coming up speaking of Kevin Biggio if I know we're switching topics completely here but um you know, with we talked about maybe a catcher is on the move out. We talked about a few different things in terms of a need. Uh, third base is a need. And we had Craig Ballard on here several times with Jose Ramirez, his name being thrown around mm-hmm. among other names. Uh, Kevin Biggio is a name that could be tossed in with uh, Reese McGuire or Danny Jansen or Alejandro Kirk, mm-hmm. maybe a pitching prospect. And all of a sudden, you've got a really good package to bring in a superstar whatever you want, but Absolutely. a superstar. So whether it's starting pitcher, third baseman, whatever. Now we're talking here. This could be, mm. and this is where Craig always said, like, wait till next season, wait till next season. Then we got all, we were all swept up now in this. Of course, <laughs> how can't you be? It's been a great run. Uh, but anyways, um, one final thing. Okay, we do we talk have a about. final score? It's killing me. Is it over? Oh, well, you told me to stop watching. Yeah, but is it over now? Uh, nope, still going. Uh, Runners on first and second. Three-one count to uh, uh, Rosarena. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it yeah. is a three. I'll give you all. He's about. He's doing the twist. Hold on. Here comes the pitch. Ball four. He walked him. Bases loaded. Oh, jeez. Okay. Okay. Well, this ba- this uh, <laughs> this this bluebird block just got real interesting. This got Max. real grim. Uh, but actually, Jordan does a really good Rick and Morty impression. Does I think he? I was trying to I've never maybe... seen Rick and Morty to be honest. No, nah, neither have I. I know it's a song right now. You Is know, that... you know who sings it? Rick and Morty. That one. No. Um, Soldier Boy. Remember Soldier Boy? Still, he's still around. Oh yeah, he's a mogul. Tell he's me. a mogul. He's a mogul. I thought he had one song. Oh, you're missing out. It was Crank Dad. It was Crank Dad. No, Soldier Kiss Me Boy. Through the Phone. You? you don't remember that one? Kiss Me Through the Phone. No, I don't remember that. Okay, well, you missed out. No. Uh, so anyways, um, last one, and this is a picture here, Rolf warning picture, warning, warning picture. Uh, so Max had this picture. Now I'm going to let you break this down and you might, Jordan, you might have to do some really fancy zooming on this. So Max can really go into detail. Uh, umpires. Now last night's game against the Rays. Yeah. Hey, perfect. Perfect. Last night's game against the Rays, uh, the Jays from, from everybody on, on social media, they got screwed by the ump. Now, the umpire was Ron Culpa. And, Max, I'm just going to let you go here. 
I don't even know. I, this is your graphic that you didn't make this. It's but. not my graphic. Let's be very no, clear no, about you that. You brought I, this I graphic. I actually feel to the like show. we need to give the Twitter account credit for who we're talking about. It's right there, I believe. Ump Scorecards. Yeah. At Ump Scorecards on Twitter. That's a very useful resource for baseball fans, much like Cap Friendly Love in the it. NHL world. Just got to shout out the resources because they are uh, incredible. But when you break down this graphic, I mean, at the end of the day, this is the umpire scorecard. Now, there is nine innings in a ball game. There's a lot of things that happen that aren't quite shown on this graphic where the Jays maybe controlled their destiny a little bit. Clark, I see your uh, game finger. over. Yes! It's Pop over. Fly. Joey it's Wendell over. flew out to Jose. Or right. Jose. It's not, it's not Jose. It's Teoscar. It's Teoscar. Uh, <laughs> anyways, Romano Way gets a pop track. out. Really got lucky there because Woo. Wendell looked like he was zoned in on it and he Woo. popped up to right field. Okay, we're good. Jays win. Jays win. The All Blue right. Jays win. Okay, right, so this good. still doesn't take away my point, or I guess my point still stands. Going back to the graphic, thank you very much, gentlemen, for bearing with us there. Blue Jays winning. Yes. Ron Culpa last night. So the way I look at this, there's a lot of things that happen in a ball game. nine innings. We could break it all down. We'd be here all night. Regardless, in the ninth inning, the end of September, in a wild card race, look at the plus 1.93 runs for Tampa Bay. That signals mm. how much of an advantage was given in terms of the calls, in terms of balls and strikes. If you look at Valera's at bat last night, Tay Oscar had a very questionable pitch as well, too, in which he was forced to swing at a very marginal one. The Jays put together some really good at-bats in the ninth inning, and this was on the heels of a Marcus Semyon two-run home run to get them back in the game. Had a runner on first, had a runner on second. In fact, the bases were juiced at one point. Valera strikes out looking. At the end of the day, it was a strike three call, but you look at this graphic, and it just tells... A story, a bit of a, I guess, an epidemic, as it were, across baseball. Ron Culpa and Angel Hernandez, those guys should not be behind a dish past July. It is absolutely ridiculous that these guys, and this is where the talk of robot umpires comes into the game, because these guys are just not consistent enough in these meaningful games. I get the baseball, there's a human element to this, but come on, guys. Where is the consistency in the most meaningful games of the year? And if you do scroll down yeah, the graphic again, it is a bit there of a longer one. You can see exactly where the missed calls were, oh. the worst missed calls. This is a fantastic resource. Like I said, at Ump Scorecards, go Look check them out. Outside zone accuracy. Like, again, just, and then the favorableness in terms of going Tampa Bay's way, in addition okay, to picking I, up the I, lineup. Can I, throw a, can I throw a counter argument? Please do. What's a really good save percentage for a goalie? Consider no, one of the best. No, no, no. That's here. not a counter argument. What's a no, really no, good? No. What's a good save percentage for a goalie? Nine twenty. No, we're not. Nine twenty is an elite I, I save percentage as a goalie. One. You're saying ninety-two percent accuracy for if an umpire. If you go and look at when these you're dealing score, with, if you go and look at these ump score cards across the entire, I don't want this counter argument. That is, it's not relevant, Clark. <laughs> that's a good I'm sorry. counter argument. No, it's not. This is baseball umpires. I have to check out some of the other score bars. Yeah, score you got to check score out some bars. of these scorecards because there's a lot of ninety-six. And in fact, there's actually league averages there, and they were three percent below on both counts. So check the graphics out. I'm sorry, but I can't stand for that argument. Max, we're talking goaltending can versus I, umpires. Can I uh, add to my counter argument? Go right ahead. Have you ever umped before? Yes. yes. Have you ever umped that level of baseball? Don't need to. It's if you not get to easy. that level, that shouldn't be happening. No, I, that's fair. But you're dealing with 98 mile an hour pitches, and you're dealing with literal inches. Uh, in Clark, a really high pressure, last really night. fast. Clark, did you watch the highlights? Yeah, last and night? honestly, can I can I say it? Hot did, take. I didn't think that Valera pitch that was called a strike was that bad. It was close. Okay, we can end the show now. Clark's gone delusional. Anyways, we can end the show now. Um, anyway, the hot take. I said a hot, I said it was yeah, a hot that's, take. That's a steaming hot I take. I could see I'm where just the saying umpire... when, it comes to, when it comes to umpires at this point of the season, when there's a wild card race going on I with five it. teams involved, you can't be throwing guys back behind the dish that are three <laughs> to five percent below <laughs> league average. I, I just, it's been a really, really tough stretch of baseball to watch. It's been an emotional stretch of baseball to watch. And when it comes oh, to umpires affecting the game, all you had to look at so was would the you plus have had 1.93 this, runs. But would you have had the same conversation if it was the other way around? What do you mean? We wouldn't be talking about it. Probably not, no. Yeah. But regardless, right. it wasn't. No, okay, fair. <laughs> I'm just uh, saying. Ma John Ohm saying, Max is so right. Leave hockey out of it, bro. <laughs> Honestly. Thank you, uh, John. It's not It's not a fair comparison because goalies and umpires, like, come on, man. But an elite goalie is a 92% Okay, sweet. So we're we talking hockey now? Hockey, I'm just saying. Being a goaltender in hockey is a 1,000% different than so being an umpire Can you bring up baseball? that graphic one more time, boys? Please do. Uh, just the go bottom, to the, the go bottom to the part. league averages as no, well. No, sorry. Actually, scroll up a little bit if you don't yeah. mind, Jordan. Go to the I need league the, average. Yeah. So he was 128 out of 140 correct. 
Yeah, and then go to the average. See the 94%. average and the overall accuracy so and the you know overall the, consistency. Do you know the difference Look there, that. Max? 3%. 128, 3% of 140. That's like two pitches. Yeah, and those two so, pitches in the ninth inning were huge. Huge. Come on, man. Jeremy Corgan says, I agree with Max. You can't compare goalie Thank save percentage you. and umps calling percentage. Thank you. All right, Sheridan Davis, totally different. Thank you. Okay, so everyone's on Team Max, Thank I you, guess. fanalists. I appreciate that. All Regardless, I'm saying just is, succinctly, he was two pitches away from being league average, and we're all over this but guy. But those as if two he's the pitches, though, Clark, in the ninth inning of a ball game that is close when you're in a wild card race, that matters. Yeah. The, and you, again, going back to that card, I again, Ump score cards. Check them out. Third time for the plug. It's fantastic. <laughs> Plus 1.93 runs in terms of favoring the Rays in that game. Oh, yeah. That tells you the story right there. Yeah. With those calls. I'm going to need that. Great and it was Western probably light. actually plus four and a half given Kevin Kiermeyer picking up the scouting. Report, Everybody's so. on Team Max right now. Jackson Seal, my nephew, says, Clark, I know you're my uncle but and blood and everything, but Max is right. Yeah. Uh, Robin Wilde says. Anyways, I appreciate you letting me go on my tangent. I was very, very hot under the collar watching that last I night. get it. Totally. Robin Wilde says, uh, Luongo really knew how to frame that safe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Clark. I mean, hey. Uh, it is what it is. Not, all, not all hot takes land. You know, uh, Sheridan says is. tonight's played up wasn't all that great either. Um, and we didn't even, okay. they we don't didn't have really to be talk perfect. about the Kiermaier thing. Do we really need to? Honestly, I don't think it's that big of a deal. It, I, it, the Jays won tonight at the end of the day. I said that this would be washed if the Jays found a way to win the ball game tonight. If anything, it would have maybe got in their heads. It would have yeah. been, that, oh, geez, they hold the scouting report or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, I did put a quote in the top of the order, I believe, of what was actually on oh, that card. Oh, yeah, okay, that I'll read up. this. Maybe um, that is important because at the end of the day, I, you so, made a fantastic point at the beginning of the show, though, too, that I'd like you okay, to Okay, yeah, okay. So here's my deal. Let me. Uh, here's my Kevin Kiermaier take. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? So the Jays or did a scouting report on the Rays hitters. The Rays hitters do scouting reports on themselves. They know what they're bad at. So if it's a, whatever's on that information or whatever's on that card that's in that picture, thank you, Rolf, uh, you know, if it, whether it's a spray chart or percentages, the Rays know all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, th that's that's what they study on a daily basis. You know what players do from uh, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. before they actually play the game? They study all day long. They watch tape. They watch themselves. They look at their swing motion. I think we should ask Ross that question if that's true. That's a – you know what? Good point. <laughs> next, time, next time Ross is on – Man, Ross, you're throwing out a lot of hot takes tonight. That, uh, I don't what know. do you do from <laughs> 9 to 5, Ross? <laughs> That's but a good uh, question, actually. Anyway, That's a really good question, yeah. actually. Please no, uh, but let's just so, scroll up, though, to show what yeah. was on the card. Throw that picture up one more time if you guys yeah. don't mind. Uh, so Kevin Kiermaier slid into home plate. He bumped into Alejandro Kirk. Kirk kind of tagged him, obviously. Mm -hmm. Kiermaier thought he was safe, so he was looking down at the plate. He sees this little paper card on the ground. Now, all baseball players have these cards nowadays. Mm -hmm. They are scouting reports. Uh, outfielders have them specifically because they need to know where they need to. Oh, look yeah. at this. <laughs> they need to know where they need to stand in the outfield compared to. You can see there's important data on that card. Right. So you Kier can see. Kiermaier looks down. This is the exact moment. This is the Ralph Wiggum moment of when he actually saw the card. Yeah. Uh, the exact moment his heart shattered or whatever the <laughs> Simpsons uh, thing is. Anyways, so he picks up this card and he takes it back to the dugout. Turns out it wasn't one of his cards in the outfield you know, information. It was from Alejandro Kirk's uh, wrist, wrist information. So he, the, he has this thing on his wrist. He looks, he flips it open. He looks, okay, Kiermaier can't hit a fastball inside. All right, we'll throw it inside. Whatever. Um, actually, I saw a really funny tweet, and it was like, Kiermaier is just mad because he just saw the scouting report, and it just said, just throw it in the strike zone. The guy can't hit. So that's why he was mad. Uh, but anyway, so. This guy he, couldn't hit water yeah, if he just, fell out of a boat. Just throw a strike. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, so anyways, Kiermaier takes it back to the dugout, and his, inf his argument was, well, I mean, by the time I got to the dugout, I'm not going to run across the field and give it back to them. Yeah, because that'd be totally embarrassing. Yeah, so yeah, he just right. he said he just threw he just disregarded it, didn't think much of it. Maybe gave it to a staff member to throw it oh, out or did. whatever. Oh, he did. He gave it to their head of baseball oh, wow. field operations, is what right. he did. But again, <laughs> he my, knew exactly yeah. what was on that card. So <laughs> this is the quote that Max pulled from the article the from data, Arash Madani, by the from way, from Arash Madani, our friend of the show. Uh, data shy. on the card would include ways to attack various hitters and other information the team would be even more protective of. While approaches to certain hitters change often and are visible in the game, allowing a rival to see how and what types of information are presented to in a game to players is far from optimal. So I totally understand that. I get it. At the same time, like I said earlier, these guys, are they, they know themselves inside and out. They literally, with their hitting coaches, would say, okay, hitting coach, study me. What do I do wrong? They would have the they would have all the information available to them. Is it a big deal? Yeah, sure. It's it's not ideal, uh, but is it 
a huge deal? I don't know. I don't think so. It's not the most sportsmanlike play, and I was it was actually awesome uh, seeing this Jays run and them getting themselves back into the push here for a wild card spot, getting a lot of texts from buddies that are tuning in, uh, especially every single night now. It's fantastic. Uh, I know I was watching the Jays game ahead of Monday Night Football last night, which is a bit of a rarity, especially uh, when it yeah. comes to being uh, with fantasy implications. But, man, oh, man, how do you not watch this Jays team right now? The um, ratings are huge, by the way. Uh, CFL ratings have tanked after mm-hmm. they had a great start. They've tanked because everyone's watching Jays games. Yep. Uh, NFL ratings, I think, are even taking a hit in Canada specifically. And, I mean, there's not hockey on right now, so it's just the perfect time, as it always is if the Jays are hot in late September. Uh, I love it, hot. though. And, like, yeah, yeah it's great. We're it's so amazing. close. Yeah. So close. That was a huge win tonight, and I think that's that's where ultimately it, it finishes this storyline, right? It proves that whatever was on that card was not important enough that they yeah. couldn't find a way to go out and win a ball game yeah. tonight. That's the biggest thing. Let's and now there Did the We're Yankees good. win tonight? We gotta uh, get, let me check. If the Yankees won tonight, that's uh, that's, that's Let me check Yahoo. Well. That's always reliable. Now, with that being said, though, Max, that brings the Jays. did you hear my joke? What's Let that? me check oh, Yahoo. Yeah, don't it's do always that. reliable. Don't do that. You probably get the Yankees uh, the scores Yankee, from Yeah, the Yankees won 7-1. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So they won. What did the Red Sox do? Uh, Red Sox won 6-3. Dang. Okay. Anyways, we didn't lose any ground The tonight, Orioles so won great. against the Phillies 2-1. There All you right, go. Then. How about Interesting. that? Interesting. They're only about 47 back now. It's yeah, great. They, they're close. Oh, we didn't even talk about that either from a couple weeks ago was the whole Robbie Ray uh, <laughs> shouting match. With, uh, not Robbie Ray shouting. Uh, the, the Orioles coach. I forget even the guy's name, know. but it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. He's not even going to have a job by the end of the year. Yeah, anyway, no, so. it's not a big deal. The uh, Twins also beat the Cubs. Fun fact. Hey, the Josh um, Donaldson Vladdy moment on the weekend that was, was nice. Cool. That was cool. Josh Donaldson, Vladdy, former MVP, pr- probably should be. Josh putting his endorsement behind Vladdy to win MVP. Also, that's great. saw an interesting tweet. I think Josh Donaldson's a free agent. Would no, you bring not. him back? Two years. Two, two more years. Two I years. looked it up to you. He signed a four-year, $92 million mm. deal. Okay. Good, good thinking, Max. Yeah. Uh, anyways, that's going to do it for the uh, Bluebird block, I guess, here. Uh, RBI Baseball. Check it's them gonna out. It's going to do they it for a- the goalie save percentage against umpires <laughs> block. <laughs> Brand new website. Check it out for RBI Baseball. Uh, great Instagram account. Check out their Facebook page. Uh, they are the premier baseball training facility and softball in southern Saskatchewan, all of the province. I say that every time. At RBI, they rise above the rest. Um, love that slogan because it has double meanings. Uh, the That's rest good marketing rest, meaning like, you know, people are taking a rest exactly. and they're rising above that or rest, meaning like everybody else. Clark, has it been a long day? Yeah. Has it been a long uh, day? We're going to do the uh, squad select now. NFL week three. Oh, yeah, we got squad select. We still have to do that. Now, the, the battle game, I wrote it down as the Rams versus the Bucks. Woo-hoo! Now, who do you think Max is cheering for? Uh, so I'm assuming because so we tied this week. I won the battle game. Max won all of his picks. So we both finished four and one. I lost the Saints and the Panthers of all games. I didn't think that one was going to happen. The Panthers rolled the Saints. Um, Other than that, though, we both had great weeks. Uh, I was given the Ravens, and they won the battle game. So I'll... I'm taking full Margin credit of for error that. In the battle game has been tough. One this point year. and two points the and day two before. Two points the previous week. Crazy. Yeah. So um, you went four and one. I went four and one. But that means it's a push. Last the week one, you had a two and three week. I had four and one. So that means I'm eight and two, and you're six and four. You're in uncharted territory, my friend. So this is rare. This is uh, just, so Max. Just be that means because it's a push from last week, we tied. You get to go first, uh, which means you get the battle game pick and the first game pick. Yikes. So, do you want to do battle game first and just well, get it out of the way? this is a bold strategy caught not bringing my computer out because I have no idea who's playing this weekend outside of well, the Rams and Bucks. where's so. your... Just bring it back. Oh, you even closed it and everything, Max. Oh, yeah. I do you want... Do you have right your now. phone? I got a phone. Okay. I, I got a cellular telecommunications device. Pull it device. up. Yep. Pull it up. Do you want to do, just do this the battle game and get it out of the way? Let's fire up a battle game. Okay. Man. So, it's the Rams and the Bucks. Who are you taking, Max? <laughs> Max, between the St. Uh, Louis. I do it every time. You between do. the L.A. Rams and the it's Bucks. Massive loss. Turn your hat Rams around really quick. Them. Between the Rams and the Bucks, who are you taking? Clark. Are you going to take the Bucks? We've done this, done this show a couple years in a row now. Second year. Yep. Down a couple of games early in the season. Not going to panic. Okay. Not going to panic. Yep. Nobody panic. Nobody panics. I'm not panicking. I got to play with my heart on this one. Yep. It's an early season game. Rams had Tom Brady's number last year. Oh, you needed that. Yep. Good, good, good idea. Oops, off the That's a bad Flamingos omen. That's are a falling. bad omen. Flamingos are falling. Vladdy's falling. Just everybody. Put him on the puck. He stands better on the puck for some reason. We're good. Okay. 
Jeez, how many have you had tonight? Jeez, knocking over Vladdy and stuff. Anyways, that so. table is extremely temperamental. So. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the it vocab is. tonight. A couple of beverages it's and a good, good stuff. Vocab, yeah. uh, regardless, yeah, got to go with my heart. Got to be the LA Rams this weekend at home. Matt Stafford looking nothing short of very, very good these first two weeks. Obviously, the indie game was a weird one. Uh, they gave up a strange touchdown on special teams where Buddy was lined up right behind the long snapper and it hit his shoulder, and then the Colts recovered in the end zone. That Classic. should have been a 10 point. Uh, victory for the Rams. Classic. Um, Daryl Henderson might be out. I'm a little nervous about that, but Sonny Michelle, this is exactly why they picked him up. They needed some depth at running back, and he proved himself fairly capable. Tom Brady and the Bucks. I want to say they've won like nine straight games scoring 30-plus points. Go ahead, Tom. Score 30 points. The Rams are going to score 35. Okay. That's Love the it. pick. That's Love the, the pick. pick. Now, you get first pick, so I don't want to do this where since you, this isn't the first Ooh, pick. Ooh, the Blues and Robert Thomas agree to a two-year, $5.6 million contract. 5.6? I protected Robert Thomas this year. So did draft. I. I like Robert Thomas. Okay. I really I'll take do. that. That's a good investment in that player. Absolutely. I'll take that for sure. Um, anyways, the, the battle Ooh. game is usually the last game that we pick, so I'm going to let you go first here, Max. So pull it up. You're so kind. Well, because if I did it, if I went next, that wouldn't make any sense. So very, very true. You go first. I will take those Baltimore Ravens against the winless Detroit Lions coming on a short coming okay. on a short week. They're yeah. playing at 11 a.m. on uh, Sunday after playing a heated Monday nighter. Um, I don't know. I think uh, Jared Goff is throwing admirably for the Lions. I think he'll find a way to score 17 to 20 points, and I think the Ravens will win this one, 35 to 20. 35 is just the number this week. Okay. I feel like my, my victors are going to score heavy on offense. Mm -hmm. So I'm going with Ravens over Lions. Zero question. This feels like a good week because, you know, normally a lot of weeks we go and we're like, man, there is no – I think there's a lot of matchups this week. Yep. I'm going to go with the one that – there's one team I absolutely hate and one team that is rolling right now uh, after this past week. I'm going to go Buffalo Bills over Washington. Mm. Uh, Buffalo is going to roll Washington. That could be an and interesting And they one. just beat the Dolphins 35 to nothing. Yeah. And I think that they could do it again. 35, Max. Number of the week. 35. Uh, <laughs> what did you... Um, sorry, what was your pick was the... Um, Ravens over Lions. Ravens. Okay, got it. I'm, I'm typing out because you're... Uh, you're a degenerate and you didn't have your laptop I for this I am a segment. degenerate. It's okay. I, I am, I am. So you're up. I am up, and you know what? This is, just feels like a gimme pick. I'm surprised this wasn't your first one, to be honest, but I will happily go 2-0, and probably 3-0 and with the Rams victory. Um, the Arizona Cardinals, mm. I hate that I'm picking them to win because they should be 1-1 one one in the NFC West. It's, every game matters. Every game matters, even in a 17-game season. Yep. Um, but I'm going to roll cards. And, over the Jaguars. Uh, over the Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars. I think, I think Kyler Murray, again, as much as we we're joking, well, at least I was joking about it in the first segment, he did still throw for like four. 400 yards the two picks were just a part of that uh that rondale moore kid man who that's that's a player and uh yeah i don't know i just like the way the cardinals are rolling their defense was fairly suspect though i started them in fantasy this week i was very very disappointed uh against a vikings team that does offer some weapons but kirk cousins at the helm i thought they would have held him in check a little more mm -hmm. uh let's see if uh they can keep uh, the rookie trevor lawrence at bay i think uh, i'm fairly comfortable betting them for sure with another mid-30 score, probably. Speaking of the uh, 35 to nothing stomping of the Dolphins, I'm going to think the Dolphins are going to stay down against the Raiders. I'm going to go with just Ooh. win, baby, and the Raiders over the Dolphins in Vegas on Sunday afternoon. So the Raiders are my next pick. Max, you're on the clock. Nice. Bunch of gimme picks, hey? Awesome. Browns over Bears. So to speak. Without a doubt. Uh, sorry, Jamie Anson. Browns yeah, over you, Bears. And yeah. Jeremy Corrigan's going to be upset with you as well. I'm sorry, Jeremy. I'm sorry, Jamie. It's uh, Browns know, over Bears. I look at the Bears, and they're, they're going to win the games that they can this year. They're not going to win any that they're not supposed to, and I think the Cleveland Browns are for real. Um, you look at the first game, they uh, put up a really good effort against the Kansas City Chiefs, and then they had a, another good week against the Texans last year, who I know aren't exactly a formidable team, but I'm sorry, neither are the Chicago Bears, so I'm going to go Browns <laughs> over Bears hands down here. All right, for my next Brown one. Brown Bears are best, uh, right? Brown Bears? Uh, no, Black Bears. Black Bears. Yeah, the office bears, reference? Black Bears. Beats, yeah. Bowser Star Which Galactic. bear is best? Well, that's debatable. No, wrong, Black Bear. And he's like, what? No. Uh, anyways, uh, I'm going to go with the Steelers on this one. They're playing the Bengals the Steelers. In, in Pittsburgh. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that the Steelers have oh, what it takes to beat I the be Bengals. Nice guy here. I hope so. I assume anyways. that you did not read the injury report. What's the injury report? 
Well, Deontay Johnson's questionable. Ben Roethlisberger's questionable. They'll play. All right. No, ben no, Roethlisberger's been. They'll, they'll play. Ben Roethlisberger's been questionable for nine years. He still <laughs> plays every game. And you got the joke in, but the joke <laughs> might be on you when Joe Burrow rolls him on Sunday. That's fair. All right. I'll go with it. I think is Mason Rudolph still there? He can he can handle it. He can handle it. <laughs> he can handle He's it. He's good. Well, again, I I just feel bad. I'm just robbing you blind on picks here. I gotta See, go I Broncos know. over Jets. Okay. Zero question about it. I mean, See, I just, I, Zach I, Wilson I four picks the on the weekend. I know you love Teddy Bridgewater and everything. I just I they're without Jerry Judy, but man, they're they're just still looking Zach like a Wilson's good football team. Zach Wilson's in for his first win of the year, I think. <laughs> you hope. It's in Denver, though. I'll give you that. It is a hard place to Mile play. High so. Stadium, Jeff Bezos Dome. Jeff Bezos Dome. It coming up. Coming soon to a stadium <laughs> near you, Jeff Bezos. Uh, I got my last pick here. Now, this is where we get down to the nitty-gritty. Um, I'm going to go... I Falcons mean, over Giants. You know what? <laughs> yes! For the he memes. He took the bait. <laughs> For the memes. Ah, oh, that's hard, though. I don't know oh, if I come sh- on. I don't know if you're, I can. You're leaning. You're leaning. Oh. So, hey, did I tell you I lost my elimination uh, s- uh, tournament? In week I- two? Week one. <laughs> <laughs> I picked the Vikings, and they lost to the Idiot. Bengals or something. I picked the Vikings. Oh. I thought they beat the Bengals. Nope. Not the, you see that TikTok? The, I'm out. The churn $20 guys? down the drain. One, two, idiot. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Um, <laughs> speaking of the Vikings, though, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go Seahawks to beat the Vikings in Minneapolis. I'll say that. Yeah, but yeah. I'll take the Seahawks. Uh, I think they are they they have what it takes. They I think they have a strong enough team that they can beat the Vikings. Man, that is And the bold. Vikings, honestly, they're 0-2. Uh, yeah. They've lost a real close one this past week. Week one, like you said. Uh, I picked them, and they burned me in my elimination league. So screw the Vikings. Let's go Seahawks. You ever heard the expression, hungry dog runs faster, though? Yeah, but I'm I'm picking a bunch of hungry. I'm just saying, the Vikings go 0-3. I'm I'm picking against a bunch of hungry dogs. Off a tough loss. The Dolphins, I'm picking the Bills. the Seahawks had a pretty tough loss, too, being up by 15 points and blowing it. Yes. Yeah. I'm picking the Dolphins against the Raiders. I'm picking the uh, Wash. Well, what did Washington do? It doesn't matter. Nobody cares about Washington. I kind of um, like Washington. I like Taylor Heineke. I like Chase Young. That's fair. I think they're guys. Chase Young is good. I'll give think you they're that. good players. Myron's checking in. Myron says Najee Harris is going to run for 146 yards and two touchdowns over Cincinnati this week. I like you. I like your thinking. That Myron. is a. That's a. That's the. We'll call him Mystic Myron. Yep, Mystic he's, Myron. He's calling plays. Uh, he's, Myron also says the set's not happy with you guys tonight. Yeah, no. we're, we're oh. crushing the set tonight. We're wrecking it all over the place. <laughs> there's, there's some uh, don't worry, IKS Media and Paul. Uh, we haven't wrecked actually no, we anything. We haven't actually. It's wrecked our flamingo. Anything. He's fine. Only only thing we wrecked was our pride tonight. That's yeah. about it. Uh, we're going to end it literally right now because Robin Wilde said over under for 853. It's 852. We're going to end it on the under. Uh, thanks to everybody in the back. Jordan Rolf crushed it tonight fixing the cameras and everything. Heck yeah. Thank you guys. Thanks to all our sponsors. We'll see you next week for our one year anniversary next one week. Year. Episode 52. We got a reveal of our new logos and stuff. We got some Whoa, stuff coming what? out. What did you just say? I don't know. See you next week. Bye. <laughs>